Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 20th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Well, it's the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. Today, Pennington's black part of town moved across the river to North Pennington. The Thompson family sold their home on the east side and moved to the old Kirkland Place at 17 Mansfield Place, establishing the all-new black neighborhood. North side residents are looking forward to the infusion of fun and funk that the new black part of town is sure to bring to their area. Mayor Mitzi Kranowitz presided over the dedication of the new black neighborhood, unveiling a sign designating it a land. Mark District. And it's lovely, everyone. Pennington's diversity is its strength, whether it's Little Harlem or the so called gayborhood where Paul and his partner Bryant have that cottage. Sheriff Stevens today announced that the heavy round the clock patrols that helped make the old Thompson house one of the safest neighborhoods in town will move with them. This has nothing to do with the black part of town moving here. We just want to make sure that everyone here has a comfortable place to live. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free here to bring up whatever's on your mind. The number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Coming up, I teased earlier in the week uh, the Bitcoin crackdown happening in Vermont. Uh, we'll talk about that because we never really did get to it. I, I think that's a pretty important story for the Bitcoin universe. And uh, with you in studio, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. So, we'll start, though, Daryl, with, uh, finally, it's happened. An election where no one has gone to vote. Not even the candidates themselves, not even the government bureaucrats showed up. No one cast their vote in this election. That's correct. And despite the claims that some people make of, if nobody votes, then the government goes away. It's gone, right? It's they shut it down, didn't they? No, no, no. They they didn't. Oh, you, uh, uh, oh darn! Shocking. Yeah. So the story is out of New Mexico, and the Albuquerque Journal has the story. They say, "What if there was an election and no one showed up to vote? Not even the candidates themselves." That's precisely what happened in the recent Hagerman School Board election. Three candidates ran unopposed. None received a single vote, not even <laughs> their own. Wow. It was this lack of opposition and not a lack of interest in education that kept the town's 1,034 eligible voters away from the polls, said Superintendent Ricky Williams, who supervises the three-school district of fewer than 500 students. The fact that the candidates were unopposed and that the election was held in Roswell, 26 miles away, may have had something to do with it. Polling stations were not open in the southeast New Mexico community. That seems like a, a decision made by Chavez County. Seems like a really long way to drive to go and cast a ballot. 26 miles. Is there something atypical going on there, or do they normally have elections 26 miles away? I don't think they normally have elections 26 miles away. That's Yeah, that's pretty uh, shocking. I mean, it could be understandable why uh, there would be very, very low turnout there. Right. The story continues. William said, we have a committed community that is high on education. The community was very supportive <laughs> of the candidates. None of the candidates for the three open seats on the five-member school board was an incumbent. Hmm. So each needed at least one vote to be elected. Really? Even though they were unopposed? Even though they were unopposed. That wow. leaves the Hagerman School Board in a bind. Cindy Fuller, Bureau <laughs> of Elections for the, or rather Bureau of Elections Chief for the county, said she consulted with the county clerk and Williams, and they are seeking legal advice. The Hagerman School Board likely will appoint the three candidates, the two remaining school board members. Yes. Okay. We'll likely appoint the three candidates to the school board at the board's next meeting on February 23rd. Fuller said that with no contested positions, no write-in candidates, and no questions or bonds on the ballot, state statute permits the clerk's office to handle the election. There was There were convenient voting stations in Roswell, they Convenient. said, but not in Hagerman. 
Yeah, I, I don't see how it is convenient right. to have your polling place miles. 26 <laughs> miles away. Yeah, there's nothing convenient about that at all. Yeah, um, you think it's you think it's hard trying to get people to vote now. Like, try putting their polling station 26 yeah. miles away. You'll never get any turnout. It's shocking, though, that not even the candidates themselves bothered to put the effort in to actually go and, and well, vote for themselves. Here's why. One of the candidates who works in a neighboring town said he was surprised to come home to Hagerman to find that the two usual polling stations were closed on election day and he did not have enough time to get to Roswell. Okay. Another candidate said she did not see a reason for the county to pay for polling stations in Hagerman when the election was uncontested. For her part, oh, she wow. went to work on Tuesday rather than to Roswell. <laughs> she said, we all want to be on the school board. It's all good. We're all donating our time and efforts. The third candidate declined comment. The zero vote turnout almost makes Albuquerque look good, they write. Less than 2.6% of voters went to the polls for <laughs> the Albuquerque. Albuquerque Public Schools and Central New Mexico Community College Board elections. Uh, I didn't realize this was for Albuquerque. I, I don't know if uh, they're taking this hour tonight. They probably aren't. They usually only take one of our three hours, and I think it's the last one of, unless there's an unusual oh, circumstance. Of the 297,291 eligible voters in Albuquerque, only 7,600 cast ballots. <laughs> now, something interesting about New Mexico law in elections, and I looked this up, if there is a tie vote, technically they are supposed to cast lots. What? Which, of course, doesn't really matter because there are only three candidates for three open seats. Right. And but what you're saying is, let me make sure I follow this correctly. So no one voted. So the clerk's office just gets to do what? It said they would they would handle things. Cast and- lots is okay. what the election law says. Uh, the but article. Think but you think they're going to appoint people? That's what the chief of the bureau of elections said. Okay. Is that the school board will just appoint them because nobody received a vote. Even though zero to zero is technically a tie vote. It's crazy. That, that, that definitely is a tie yeah. vote. Yeah. So there was an election. Nobody showed up. The government didn't go away. The school board did not dissolve because not everybody was up for election right, at the so, same time. But, uh, but what's the takeaway from this? I mean, because a critic is going to say, well, yeah, nobody voted, but they would have had it been more convenient. So the system has rules in place to deal with situations like this. And, you know, those rules are being executed. This isn't. This doesn't mean that the people of, what, uh, Hagerstown or something? Uh, like? Hagerman. Hagerman. Yeah. This doesn't mean that the people of Hagerman don't support the school board or don't support the system. It just means that they're too, you know, they were too busy to come out 26 miles and, and you know, actually cast a vote. Right. And what's also interesting is that nobody cast a uh, absentee ballot because nobody knew beforehand that the polling place was going to be 26 miles away. And then they showed up at the polling locations, found out they were closed. And, and just didn't drive 26 miles. Yeah. Yeah, I've got better things to do. I've got to go back to work. I've got to take care of my kids, whatever. So what I take away from this is there's a lot of people that say, you know, if you vote, you're endorsing the system. If you don't vote, it'll go away. And that's not what happens. No. And that's this not what happens time. at all. Right. This is in this is not the only time we've covered on this program a story similar to this. And there have actually been stories where the voting locations were in town and people have not voted, right. including the candidates. So there are even better stories where so no one could use the excuse, oh, well, it was 26 miles away. Well, no, they were open in these other towns that we've talked about in the past and nobody showed up. And yet still the government continues operating. And the reason to me as to why is because the government runs on obedience, not voting. Voting is just a little a game that they've set up to allow you to elect the dictator or allow you to elect the head gang members or however you want to look at it. Um, And, of course, there's some questions as to whether or not those voting processes are legitimate and they're not, you know, rife with fraud and all kinds of, you know, issues there. But presuming the processes are legitimate, it's just a way for you to pick the the head gang leaders. Yeah, and not necessarily even the head gang leaders, but just, you know, whoever is going to wind up being in the position. Because, you know, I, I would not necessarily say that the state representative is the gang leader. Like, you know, they're trying to make suggestions to the gang leader 
So who is the gang leader then? Just the, the like the top executive of I, I would say bureaucracy? the top executive. Okay. What's the phrase that people say when they're picking the one that is like the least evil, like the lesser of two evils? That's right. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's another option too. So share your thoughts with us here. Are you one of those who believes that the end of voting, that if in any area votes do not happen, that that will somehow lead us to more freedom? I would really love to hear from you because I know they're out there. I know those people are in our audience. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Sometimes they're behind microphones here. Johnny Ray, our uh, former Tuesday night co-host who is uh, currently working on uh, designing his own plays, directing uh, his first time directing a, like a theater play, uh, he does not support voting. And I don't know if he believes that if people stop voting, the system will go away, however. But there are people who do believe that. Yes. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. To me, the system won't go away until people stop believing in it and paying for it. And that we're yes. a long, long way away from that happening. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. You can also join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. There's more coming up. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. For deals on the latest hardwood flooring trends, get to Lumber Liquidators. Don't settle for the stuff at the big box stores. We've got all the hottest flooring styles for less, like the timeless look of real oak. This week, get pre-finished oak hardwood for less than you'd pay for laminate at other stores. Now, it's an incredible 99 cents. Or get three-quarter inch solid pre-finished red oak for $2.59. Plus, it's your last chance to save $500 on Bellawood. Get deals on bamboo, laminates, and more from 49 cents. And special financing. Don't miss this season's hottest hardwood deals. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 avoid diseases 900 by getting 90 essential, essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at ToBeYoungAgain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or ToBeYoungAgain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. 
For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free to join us here on the radio waves at 855 450 free. That's toll free 855 450 3733. You can join us online as well. Username on Skype is lrn.fm. And don't forget, if you are interested in trying out a pound of some of the best coffee out there from Buzzbox, we can get you hooked up. All you have to do is go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's some great coffee. In fact, shade grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica. It's excellent coffee. And there's some excellent stuff kind of going on behind the scenes. The profits from uh, some of the profits from the, each pound that they send out are going to kiva.org. Now, Mark is the one who's directing choosing which uh, folks to give these micro loans out to. And from my understanding, every 10 listeners who signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com allows us to send out as from what i'm told one micro loan every single month and i think that's pretty impressive so we're helping people make better lives for themselves and you get great coffee so you get your first pound free just pay the shipping cost and you can cancel your subscription at any time go to coffee.freetalklive.com again that's coffee.freetalklive.com uh ian danica and daryl in studio here we go actually to cameroon africa where akko is on the line here on skype akko are you with us yeah, hello, Ian. Hey there. <laughs> hello, well, David, and hello, Danica. I'm happy to be on the show. Welcome. Oh. Welcome back. So you're calling. It's probably uh, past midnight there in Cameroon right now. Uh, you've, For listeners who've never heard you before, you have uh, spent some money and time to get into a location where you can actually call us as you don't live in Bamenda, which is typically where you call us from because uh, the, your hometown in DOP does not have uh, any Internet access whatsoever. Um, but so thank you. I mean, you put a lot of effort into to contacting us, and there's always something interesting you want to share. So what what did you want to share with our audience tonight? Uh, I I I want to report about our internet transmission problems that we have been having here for two days. For two days now, we are unable to receive uh, your almighty radio on satellite. I don't know what is happening. I don't know. Many listeners here keep coming to me and asking me questions. What is wrong? The other day, I realized that that, that that's the problem that we were facing. I thought that my antenna was maybe shaken by the wind, but all of a sudden, I started receiving calls from listeners telling me that there, there is no broadcast of, of the radio on satellite. So I don't know what the problem is. I was afraid whether is it my government that has removed it from the air or what. Well, I can't tell you right now because, uh, well, you sent me a message about this earlier, uh, this or I guess later this afternoon, uh, to give me a heads up that our satellite signal over Africa has been off the air for apparently a couple of days now. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, not wow. good Not good news. Um, you also confirmed that other channels appear to be off, too, so it may not be a problem that is just affecting uh, Free Talk Live and LRN.FM, that it may be affecting what they would call a transponder in the satellite business. See, each satellite has these transponders on them that are at sort of different frequencies uh, that hold different channels. So the transponder we're on, maybe it's down. I don't know. I've uh, I've emailed the uh, satellite provider that we use, and they have yet to get back to me, which is unusual because they're usually fairly quick uh, with that kind of thing. But I've never right, actually... Right, but if there's a problem with the satellite, then you know they've got other things could to be, deal could with. Be. But the thing is, I've never contacted whichever uh, uplink facility is uplinking to Africa. So with satellite communications, they have these large uplink facilities. You've probably seen like in the movies, they've got the you know like a sci-fi movie. They've got these huge satellite dishes. I yes, I think you see things like that at uplink facilities. 
Uh, I've never actually toured one of them, but they have them in different locations of the world because obviously from the ground, you know, in the United States, what you can see in the sky is different than what you would be able to see over in Cameroon. And so there's, uh, uh, so I don't know uh, uh, this. Normally when I talk with the satellite provider, it's the one that's in the United States. Cause that's kind of the primary one. Sure, yeah. And so I've never actually interacted with whichever, and I don't know where the uplink is for, uh, for Africa. So I'll, hopefully I'll find that out and be able to resolve this problem sooner rather than later. But you know, I've, sometimes things are out of my yeah, hands. I, I, is it possible yeah, that I've, the it, channel just moved somewhere on the band i suppose that's that's possible uh, so the so I, I know you're trying to get in there uh, akko so go ahead with your thoughts i can talk a little uh, more tech I, if necessary I pray, that, I pray that this problem get fixed uh, very soon if not listeners are going to swallow me here uh, people well, keep calling oh. <laughs> i was forced to i was really forced to switch off my phone today because i've received more than 15 calls from listeners wow so the earlier this wow. problem get fixed the better so <laughs> i i mean i love that People because in Africa people, people, people are listening. Here, people, here, people, are, people here are looking up to me for answers, of which I don't have anything to say to them. Oh, so that's great, though. I'm so glad they're looking to you. Well, I'm, I'm glad to... That that problem... Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that, you know, things are, that folks out there are paying attention, and I appreciate the, you know, the, the feedback. Uh, we'll do what we can to get the, the, cha the channel resolved. Um, but, Daryl, you asked the question, like, could the like channel somebody, have moved? Like one, like one of the callers, uh, Saluhu Muamadu, told me that he cannot afford to miss Free Talk Live again. If he does, then something is going to happen. For two days now, he has not been able to listen to the show. This is That's because not good. The, oh, you know, yeah, withdrawal. <laughs> yeah. This is because people in the cannot cannot get access to the internet. Right. If not, they, they, they will just log on to the internet and listen to it online. Free-to-air television and, and radio is a, is a lifeline for people. I mean, there are 4 billion people in the world which is actually the majority from what I understand, just barely, uh, 4 billion people in the world that don't have internet access. And it's hard for us in the United States and in other developed areas of the world to really cr kind of come to grips with that, right? Because so the majority we're of the population doesn't have access to it. That's Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, we here we are in this studio right now, and all three of us are on the Internet, and we probably each have a phone, uh, a smartphone that can access a different connection to the Internet. So between the three of us in the studio, we're actually using probably four or five different Internet connections. Plus, you've got... Uh how many computers over there each well, with right computer. i was counting two internet connections for the studio because we have a cable modem and a dsl here in the lrn.fm studio for kind of redundancy's sake so if one goes wow. down the other's for still some, there and then between somebody, the phones we somebody, have go ahead for somebody to have uh, such an internet connection here in Cameroon, i don't think it is possible no we i mean have just, we did some we speed tests and it's pretty bad providers. there uh, we have just two internet providers in in Cameroon, uh, MTN, which is a South African-based company, and Orange, a French-based company. And they're both and wireless, you know, aren't they? No, 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 no. The wireless are those that you cannot access anything on. Oh, really? You cannot do anything with. So how do they how do they run the internet? I mean, is it uh, like here in in the United States? They the most common ways are what's called DSL and cable. And DSL is run over an old old phone line system that's been installed here in the U.S. for many decades. Uh, and cable is run over these cable television lines, which, from my understanding, you guys don't have there in Cameroon. How how is the internet getting getting to you? What's the delivery method? Do you know? Yes, you have to buy what, what we call here the internet key and connect it to your laptop. When you connect it to your laptop, there will be the software. When, when, you, when, when you install the software on your computer, they will get access to their network. That's how you get connected. But is, but there, is there a cable that's going into this uh, the computer that's carrying the internet? Or is it coming from like a Wi-Fi access card? Yes, like something coming like from the Wi-Fi because they have their pools everywhere that they have installed. So the Stand by, Akko. Up. Hang on. Well, we'll uh, we'll bring it back here, and I appreciate uh, the the expertise and the say, the inside scoop on what things are like in a completely different place from what we're so used to here in the United States. You're welcome to share your thoughts here at 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay Four in One Smart Organic Cooker. 
unglazed Zisha clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins and minerals for your good health. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special super early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through early March, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You, of course, can bring up anything you'd like, 855-450-FREE. And from anywhere in the world, we are talking with Akko, who is a, a fairly regular caller. I don't mean like every night kind of regular, but regular as in we hear from him once every month or so and kind of get an update on uh, what things are like over in Cameroon, Africa. And it is a completely different world out there uh, than what we're used to here in the United States. As I was mentioning, 4 billion people in the world, they don't have Internet access. They just don't have it where they live. Uh, Akko has to travel 20-something, I think, kilometers, uh, 27. Uh, Akko, you're back with us here on Free Talk Live. How far is it from uh, from Endop to Bomenda where you can get internet access? It's 40 kilometers. 40. 
40 kilometers. It's a bit of a yeah. bit of a hike there yeah, uh, to that's quite a bit to get online, and, uh, and then you got to you know pay essentially by the gigabyte in order to uh, you know to access that internet, and it is not cheap to do that. So we'll continue uh, discussing things here with Akko in a moment, but I want to also invite you to the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Uh, unfortunately, Bitcoin it's hard to use in the places of the world that don't have internet because. Well, you kind of need internet to have Bitcoin, but in the places that do have internet, it is really uh, evolutionizing, kind of really taking money to the next step, the next amazing uh, plateau. And of course, Bitcoin keeps getting better over the years because it can be upgraded uh, by the the awesome team that is uh, is putting it together. It's an open source project, by the way, and you can learn a lot more about Bitcoin by joining us at the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Mark and I are going to be there this year. It's the second annual. We were there last year for the first one. This one's going to be in downtown Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. Some of the keynote speakers to include George Gilder. Uh, He's a a famous investor, economist, and author. Plus, IBM's architect of their blockchain technology, Sambala Nair, is going to be flying in from India. Other speakers, they're all over at TexasBitcoinConference.com. There's a bunch of them. So go and check out the site. Get signed up using code FTL, and you'll save $25 off the already very affordable $150 admission price. Plus, when you use code FTL, another $25 will go to Sean's Outpost, which is a great Bitcoin-based homeless charity uh, that's uh, based in uh, northern Florida. So go to TexasBitcoinConference.com, use code FTL. We'll look forward to seeing you March 28th and 29th at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin for the second Texas Bitcoin Conference. Plus, they are featuring the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. If you want a glimpse into the future going even beyond Bitcoin, you'll want to be in Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. Use code FTL at TexasBitcoinConference.com. We've got Akko back with us here calling from Bamenda in Cameroon, Africa. And you were explaining to us that the apparently the satellite channel that Free Talk Live and the other great LRN.FM content shows are available on in Cameroon is off the air and that you've been getting calls from friends of yours who you turned on to listening to the channel uh, LRN.FM over satellite. Um, And it's it's a lifeline for folks because this free to air television, free to air radio. It's a really important thing in areas that don't have Internet access. We're spoiled here in the United States. We've got all the data that we want at our fingertips in areas that don't have Internet satellites. All there is. There's no such thing as cable television uh, in your hometown. Uh, no, no. Here, before you get access to the internet, I have said it. You have to travel about forty kilometers to, in order to do that. But he, you, we have folks here who depend solely on satellite uh, transmission. Now that it has been interrupted, uh, they don't get access to it. They look up to me for answers. So that's why I contacted you guys to know what is happening and. We should try and get the problem fixed. We're working on it. So, Akko, I know there was other stuff you wanted to tell us about uh, tonight, including what happened when you tried to go and pick up some money at a MoneyGram location. Something that uh, has been done in the past is some of our listeners have reached out to you and offered to send some money to help maybe, you know, whatever it is you you need help with out there, including buying satellite systems for, for people and getting it installed. Uh, you tried to pick up some money over at uh, the MoneyGram location, and something happened. Yes, uh, as you remember, David Baker tried to send me some money, and MoneyGram blocked the transaction. That's right. That it flagged a kind of security kind of alert. So he 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 transferred the money to you to send to me because you have been sending me money. But all of a sudden, I went to Bermuda to collect that money. It, it wasn't possible. They started asking me questions. They even brought the police in. Oh, my goodness. What? Yeah, and this is something we've done before. So when Akko first called the show several months ago, uh, I think it was his second time he called in, we actually put together a little fundraiser, and Free Talk Live listeners raised approximately $150 to send over to Akko. I did that. He collected it. No problem. And so I've sent him money previously in fact, I believe I've sent more than once. Yeah, I've sent twice previously, and then most recently, this mo- more recent uh, 50 bucks that was being sent, yep. actually courtesy of Davi Barker, who was some for some reason blocked from sending it. Um, I sent the 50 bucks, and that's what Akko tried to go and pick up this week, and yes, they called the government on you. He- because they, they know me, they, they know that I am an activist here, and, and they have had information that there is a foreign body trying to fund me because they call me as an anti-government propaganda machine. 
I think that's why they, they have blocked me from getting their money. I, I, because I don't understand why. Because that money is not blocked by MoneyGram. They cannot simply pay me the money, and I don't know why. And, and you said something about to me um, off the air that they were doing some sort of an investigation. Did the government yes. take the money, or is it still sitting at MoneyGram? It is still sitting on MoneyGram. That's why I asked you yesterday to go and withdraw the money because they told me that they are, they are trying to investigate the source of the money. Why you guys are sending me money, and do I do any work for you? Something like that. It, it, they know what they are doing. This government of all of us here knows what they are doing. They believe that you guys are funding me to spread anti-government rumors against. This. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> they caught us. <laughs> But wow. they are not going to stop me from 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 my activism. I will I will keep on with that. I will rise with that. But that's unfortunate, and it's really um, it's really dep- kind of sad, uh, very sad actually, that this old world money system is is so easily you know there's like it's choke point. It's so easy that's, for the government uh, yeah, guys to go yeah, in. Yeah, you stop have to this. wait for a check to clear. You you know yeah. have to check make sure the che- the money is not counterfeit or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's why that's why I have to stick to bitcoins. My account is still here, very life. I check it on daily basis. I am going to stick with bitcoins because with bitcoins there will be no police or no official to come and question me on how to use my money. My money belongs to me. My money it should not be answerable to the government. That's the why the problem, bitcoins though, the problem. Uh, yeah, and I love that bitcoins can be a solution to this because that's one of the things that bitcoins are great is that uh, they're great for is they're a decentralized system. There is no MoneyGram or Visa or Mastercard or any of these old banks and these old money institutions who are in charge of Bitcoin. There's no governments in charge of Bitcoin. So if you want to send money to somebody somewhere, all you need is their Bitcoin address. You send the Bitcoin and it's there. I mean, it's that simple. There's a brief process that takes a few minutes to confirm that the money's there but once that's done yes. there's no bureaucrat like, like, standing like, in the way uh they, yes, or no like, bureaucrat that can like stand the account, in the way like the account that you have me created on blockchain.info mm-hmm. and the, and the bitcoins that you sent to me they are still there nobody has touched it our government here which is a very local government made up of individuals who want to just aggrandize power and authority cannot get access to it because it is a virtual currency i think i'm going to stick with that but uh, but the problem with the, but how do you how are you going to get over the issue of the fact that Bitcoin can't help you, you know, in your hometown? You could access it I when think, you're in Bamenda, but you have no internet in uh, your hometown. I think I think, that, I think with time I think with time there are going to be companies here who are going to be trading with bitcoins. That's what a certain manager from a local bank told me. Really? That they are trying to see how they can integrate their system with the Bitcoin system. So I think that is going to be the best. But that notwithstanding, I've also applied to create a, a bank account in a certain bank where those transactions can easily take place without passing through the police and other government officials. There are also companies like uh, Coinapult that are using SMS, mm-hmm. which is essentially text message, which they have for sending and receiving Bitcoin. To Should, where you don't yeah. necessarily need to know the person's Bitcoin wallet number. You, you know just need to number? know their telephone number. All right. Well, we should turn uh, Akko onto that. Akko, hang on. We'll bring it back for another segment here in a moment. Uh, more with Akko from Cameroon. I, you know, I'd heard about Coinapult, but it didn't really click with me that that might be able to help the folks there in Cameroon. But, of course, having Internet is re- a really important uh, factor in general. But, yeah, they do have cell phones, but I imagine there's still some places where there's no cell phone coverage. We'll find out in a moment. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 
101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. According to a new report, the vast majority of Americans simply want to be safe, happy, rich, comfortable, entertained, thin, and romantically fulfilled. The Onion spoke to a few of the survey's respondents who also claimed they want to be healthy, fulfilled, and successful, and energized at all times. All I want is a low-stress job, a nice house, affordable health care, and low gas prices, you know? It'd be nice to have a 35-hour work week, delicious food that's actually good for me, strong friendships, and free high-speed Wi-Fi wherever I go. I think I'm entitled to wealth, love, cheap education, a fair legal process. According to the survey, 63% of all Americans want their summers to be hot but not too hot, 85% want the government to stop all wars and world hunger and make quick and easy weight loss possible, 93% want to be emotionally satisfied, plus a soulmate, unconditional love from their parents, and a big happy dog. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 you can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. And, of course, join us online at freetalklive.com, where, by the way, if you are looking to acquire some Bitcoin or maybe Litecoin, perhaps Dogecoin, you can go to expresscoin.com to do it. If you're in the United States or Canada, they make it easy, and it's inexpensive and fast and safe. They're a licensed money services business in the U.S. or Canada. Just go to expresscoin.com. You can grab their app for your smartphone. Again, that's expresscoin.com. Use coupon code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 of your preferred cryptocurrency with no fee at all. Expresscoin.com. Coupon code FTL. As we continue here, Ian, in studio with you tonight. Danica. And Daryl. And Akko is joining us on Skype from Cameroon, Africa. He's in Bamenda right now, which is a city, a city kind of in the sort of the western quadrant, uh, sort of north, not really northwest, but more like more western area. Northwest. Of Cameroon. North, north, northwest of Cameroon. Yeah. And so welcome back, uh, Akko. There's a few different things you'd called in about tonight, including this the situation that you've got with MoneyGram, where you've previously been sent money via MoneyGram before, it's like a five dollar fee to send money from the United States to uh, to somebody over in uh, in Cameroon, 
and we've successfully done this, but the most recent time when I tried to send some money to you, they uh, they put some sort of a freeze on it, and they called the police. The MoneyGram people called the cops in, when they and then they came in and told you that they're investigating the source of the money, and they've essentially prevented you from being able to pick it up, which yes. has it kind of led you to conclude that Bitcoin is a good way to get around this. But my concern, and the concern that that you had echoed previously when when I was first we first kind of talked about Bitcoin in the past, was that there was not an easy way in Cameroon to convert Bitcoin into uh, what is it the franc, there. Yes, it, it is. It is almost impossible for somebody to use uh, the bitcoins here. But somebody has told me from a very reliable source that very soon there are banks and companies that are going to adapt its system to bitcoin. So we, I have to wait and see with in the future what the future may hold. Well, I really liked Daryl's suggestion of Coinapult. Uh, they do have an SMS-based method to send bitcoin. And that way you don't have to have internet. You just have to have a cell phone signal. And from what I understand, Cameroon is no exception to this, but in a lot of places in Africa, cell phone networks are fairly prolific. It's been, uh, you know, like Somalia is a classic example of this, where cell phone networks have been set up and, you know, there's no government around to really ask permission think, to do, do it I there. Think you have sent me, me the link to the coin app port. I'm going to go through it, then I will see whether it will work for me or not. And yeah. I will let you know. Well, yeah, because you've got a blockchain uh, wallet. So for listeners who are new, Bitcoin is this decentralized currency uh, that can be sent anywhere in the world for next to zero cost. And uh, so you've got this blockchain.info web-based wallet. I guess in theory, the idea would be you could then create, I've never gone through this, but you could then have one over at Coinapult. That somehow create a, create your own wallet with them, I would guess, and then load some Bitcoin into that wallet. Then have your friends do the same thing. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I've never been through the process. Has have you, Daryl? I I have not, but I've talked to people that have, and basically you would set up a wallet at Coinapult and then oh. you know, send whatever Bitcoin you have from. One wallet to the Coinapult wallet. So here I'm reading. And then they use the SMS. They store the Bitcoin on their servers so and then they send it through SMS. So what it says uh, here on the Coinapult site, coinapult.com, is their SMS and web interfaces can be used to send Bitcoins to a phone number. If you use Coinapult to send Bitcoins to a number that is not already in their system, a new account will automatically be created and the recipient will receive a notification message. Now, that's pretty cool. That is really cool. Because it doesn't require the recipient to have internet access to even set up the account. All you have to do is send the Bitcoin to their cell phone number. They'll get a notice saying, hey, you've got Bitcoin, and then presumably a way to actually access yes. and resend that Bitcoin. So uh, I think it's very interesting. And so my question for you, Akko, is uh, how prolific is cell phone signal in, uh, in Cameroon, where you live? Yeah. Yeah, they are very powerful. Most of the companies here are, are shifting their network to the 3G uh, platform. I think that it is very solid. 3G? Very solid. Th 3G? Yes, 3G. Yes. Well, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty sh surprising. I mean, now, is, is 3G, I imagine 3G is going to be available in Bamenda, which is a city, but what about Ndop, yeah. which is a very small town no, where you no, live? No, there is no prospect that it is going to be upgraded in Dub, but only in urban areas. Do you even have cell phone access in Ndop? Is there any signal at all there? Yes, there, yes. In Cameroon, ev almost everywhere you can make calls or you can send SMS. But the problem is the access to the internet, right? Where it is restricted. Okay, so this internet. may be th this may be yeah. the solution because if uh, if there is cell phone SMS based coverage in Ndop, which is your your hometown. Then, then in theory, then Coinapult would work for people to be able to send Bitcoin uh, back and forth to one another. Yes, it is quite possible. The signals here are very powerful. So I'm sure very you'll powerful. look into it and uh, and get back to to us on on how it works. Yes. So and Ian, I have to I have two announcements to make. Yeah, please. Yes, I've I've started teaching secondary school students because I am I am a trained teacher professionally uh, to teach English language to francophones and to teach French language to anglophones. So I've started volunteering in teaching children because I've realized that with the knowledge that I have, I, I can empower the children here because they need education and education is the only way out. I think 
I, I will do that as long as it may take me. I, even though it is volunteering here, it may be very difficult, but that is what I've started and it is going on very well. But I keep facing this problem with adapting with students in the classroom situations. So I've, I've decided to take an online course uh, entitled Resilience in Children Exposed to Trauma, Disaster and War. So with this course now, it is going to enable me to adapt with different categories of children that I will have in the classroom. Why am I taking this course? It is to empower the, the, the young Cameroonians, the youth, because they are the future of tomorrow. They, they should live in an era where they will be aware of the role that the government will play in their lives. N not that they should be brainwashed and be remote controlled by some government or authorities. So that is what I've started. Well, that's very exciting. So you very had cool. told me previously that you were an English teacher uh, there yes, in, in I Cameroon. Yes, I French. Right, yes, because I it's a bilingual uh, country, although the, the, the area in which you're living is more of an English-speaking uh, area. Yes. Would you oh, say the native oh, language so is Afrikaans or French or English? No, we have, we have, we have, we have national languages here, around okay. 270 of them. But officially, we speak English and French in in formal settings gotcha but i yes i have my first degree in bilingual studies so a kind of comparative studies of both english and french so i also have a diploma in in teaching in that field so i've been sitting for long without a job i've decided to start volunteering in teaching and i, I am finding pleasure in that it is going i am very passionate about this that's very exciting yeah good for you i i mean i <laughs> You know, only, you know, I I know English obviously, and I know quite a bit of Japanese. But someone that's fluent in more than one language is just—it's incredible. Like, just in, imagine the kind of minds that you can touch with that. That's great. Yes, here here we can speak both languages very fluently because uh, from from the kindergarten level of our education, we are exposed to to the two languages. So you grow with them. You have this situation of inartism where you naturally acquire both languages hmm. effectively. So in Cameroon, you can have very bilingual people who speak English and French. Akko, anything then, else you uh, want to share tonight with our international audience here on Free Talk Live? Yes, yes. Somebody contacted you from Poland in the name of Camille, uh, who wants to have contact with me. It is, it is wonderful. They are inviting me to Poland to, for a week-long seminar to deliver a speech on free market system. Oh, it's so uh, exciting. I mean, be cool. because uh, I actually, yeah, I'd, I'd seen an email about this previously. When you had called us before, uh, you told us about one of our other listeners, James Davis, who's a Free State Project early mover who reached out to you. And he also helps out with Free Talk Live behind the scenes uh, with our weekly emails that we send out. But uh, he reached out to you, Akko, and said he wanted to help you get a passport. And, uh, yes. and he sent you some money, and you started that process of working towards getting the passport. Now, here you are, now that you're getting this, maybe, hopefully, going to get the passport. Yes. Uh, that Now yes. there's this invitation coming from Poland saying, hey, we want to bring you up to speak at a conference. Yes. So exciting. That is cool. Oh, that's, that's great. It's, it's, yes, it, they told me that it's going to be a, a, long, a week-long seminar on free market system in Africa a market economy in which decisions regarding investment and production sounds like you're the right guy to uh, to bring up there for it Akko, thanks for calling in tonight we'll uh, do our best to work on that satellite outage that you're experiencing and apologies for the inconvenience thank you for the call uh, that's Akko calling from Cameroon Africa fascinating stuff you're welcome to share your thoughts here toll free number 855 450 free uh, some pretty awful Bitcoin news coming out of Vermont coming up DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. 
Get a free pound. Try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, February 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,213 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $244. Antiwar.com reports Pakistani and Afghan officials say they have been assured by the Taliban that they are ready to engage in peace talks with the Afghan government with an eye on ending over 13 years of war. Officials say the talks could start as soon as next month, but details have yet to be worked out. Both the U.S. and Taliban have denied that any current talks are ongoing. Pakistan has been leading the push for this new round of peace talks and has been using its military intelligence community's considerable influence to coax Taliban leadership to the negotiation table. Whether the talks are going to amount to anything is another matter, as previous efforts to get the negotiations going stalled pretty quickly over minor procedural matters. The new Afghan government is trying to present itself as much more willing to make a deal than its predecessors, however, and that is reason to be optimistic. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a U.S. judge on Thursday rejected BP's attempt to reduce the maximum civil fine it could face for its role in the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill, leaving it potentially liable to pay $13.7 billion under the Federal Clean Water Act. U.S. District Judge Carl Barbier in New Orleans agreed with the federal government that the maximum civil penalty that BP could face is $4,300 per barrel spilled. BP had sought a $3,000 per barrel maximum, equal to a maximum $9.57 billion civil fine. Barbier has not decided how much BP should pay, and it is unclear when he will decide. Setting a fine is the last step in a civil trial overseen by Barbier to determine responsibility and penalties for the April 20th, 2010 blowout of the Mocondo oil well, which killed 11 workers and caused the largest U.S. offshore oil spill. BP spokesman Jeff Morrell said the company disagrees with the decision and is considering its legal options. Barbier previously ruled that BP had acted with gross negligence or willful misconduct and that 3.19 million barrels of oil were spilled. These factors are being used to set the maximum civil fine. BP has incurred more than $42 billion of cost for the spill, including cleanup, fines, and compensation to victims. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports a recent U.S. Army War College study states dishonesty and deception among Army personnel is common. In the study called Lying to Ourselves, Dishonesty in the Army Profession, the War College's Strategic Study Institute interviewed Army personnel from all ranks and found that lies permeate throughout the military institution, whether by civilians or those in uniform. Officers sometimes face a suffocating amount of tasks. Often, they use phrases to make it seem as if they've complied to all requirements demanded. The study said personnel do this to sugarcoat the hard reality that in the routine performance of their duties as leaders and commanders, U.S. Army officers often resort to evasion and deception. The most highlighted rationalization to partake in dishonesty is that it is often necessary to lie because the task asked of personnel or the reporting required of them is unreasonable, irritating, or, quote, dumb. One officer said, we don't trust our compliance data. Part of the reason why lying is so prevalent is because there is a psychological disconnect between performing a dishonest act and facing the consequences for it. Former Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel sent a memo to the most senior leaders of the U.S. military last week suggesting that military, including senior officials, need to be accountable and have a higher ethical standard. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. His name is Osimo. Honda has unveiled its new human-like robot that the team says is designed to run a non-competitive half marathon and then smugly brag about it afterwards. Project leader Kenji Saito calls the robot very aggravating, adding, quote, we knew how to create a robot that could run great distances at high speeds. The challenge was to build a bot that would be impressed with its own minor achievement. The robot even believes it could run a full marathon if it wanted to, but it's just doing this to stay in shape and have some fun. If I wanted to, I probably could have played college football. Aiming to make the android as realistically human as possible, scientists installed sensors to register derisive comments and eye rolls from annoyed co-workers as genuine interest in its self-centered blather. The team noted that the irritating robot could be useful in medical fields as well. Already, Osmo has pestered scientists into sponsoring it to run a 5K in Cape Cod this summer. To date, it's raised over $700 for leukemia research. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you can dial on in toll free here. There's been a Bitcoin crackdown in Vermont, which is pretty shocking. We'll tell you about that here in a moment. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. Uh, joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And we're going to go to your calls and thoughts. We've got Nicholas on the line via Skype. Nicholas, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, hi, guys. Can you hear me? Hey, Nicholas, where are you calling from? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, I'm calling from Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome, sir. Go ahead with your thoughts. Um, so I called in a couple of days ago about the NSA uh, bugging hard drive. Yes, thing. yes. disturbing uh, story. From, yeah, and from the same blog that I was reading a couple of days ago, they've now posted another um, link to apparently a workaround to this problem for people who don't want the NSA. Okay, buying on their which hard should drive. be everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know uh, if you guys are aware of this. It's a it's a program called Tails. Um, yes. Oh, you do know about that. Uh, but go ahead and explain uh, for our yeah, listeners. Yeah, because I don't know what it is. What it is. Well, I'm just reading straight off of their promotional site, but it says Tails is a live operating system that you can start on almost any computer from a DVD, USB stick, or SD card. It aims at preserving your privacy and an- anonymity um, and helps you to leave no trace on the computer that you are using unless you ask it explicitly. And it automatically logs onto the internet using Tor, the Tor browser. Um, and it appears to be a completely independent uh, program that is not is somehow separated from the firmware on your hard drive. But I'm not totally sure how this thing works. So I can explain a, a little bit better here. Uh, Tails is a Linux install that you can actually have installed on a flash drive or a CD or DVD. And basically what you do is you take your DVD or flash drive and you plug it into any computer that has a DVD drive or a USB port. Uh, you plug it into that computer, you turn the computer on, you select to boot from the DVD drive or the, fl- the, the flash drive. And then the computer will load its operating system from that drive. 
which loads temporarily, essentially. It loads into memory. It doesn't actually install itself on the computer. So essentially, uh, Daryl, you've got your laptop in front of you. Yes. If I had a copy of Tails, I could take that Tails, I could borrow your laptop, boot it into Tails, and do whatever I wanted to with Tails, and nothing would change on your hard drive, on your storage. I wouldn't be meddling in any of your files. I wouldn't even be using your operating system. I would just be using your computer to run this copy of Tails, yes. which can then be used, as you pointed out, uh, Nicholas, to connect to the internet and using Tor to connect to the internet. So it's sort of two different levels of privacy protection. There's the level of this is a portable operating system that has no permanent files essentially every time you boot the system it's like a fresh kind of install if you will even though install is not really the right word it's just a, a fresh operating system that's essentially never been used before so there's that level of uh, privacy and that there are no files that you can just save in tails although i think there is a way to create some saveable files but by default it's not set up to do that and then so there's that level of privacy like operating system level and then there's the level of privacy on top of that from Tor, uh, which some dispute whether or not Tor is actually private, but presuming that it is, you then have that level on top of the operating system level. So you've got, uh, you've got private internet browsing on what is essentially a private operating system that is completely portable. So uh, does that help explain it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, anyway, it's been put on the blog that I read as perhaps a way of working around that. NSA problem, but I can't make any guarantees. And it appears that they still have some kinks to work out. I'm seeing in the news feed that uh, some complaints have been issued about it. But anyway, it's promising. Uh, yeah, technology. that's an interesting uh, workaround. And what is the blog? Go ahead and give it a plug. Uh, it's the same one I mentioned the other day. It's armstrongeconomics.com. He actually talks mostly about economics, but he hmm. is concerned about the NSA, just as all libertarians are. And so he periodically puts postings about uh, technology and like the Reuters article we had a couple of days ago. Nicholas, anything else you want to share tonight? No, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Chernobyl on the line calling from Ithaca. Excuse me, Zach calling from Ithaca. <laughs> go ahead, hey, Zach. you talking to me? Yes, you're on the you're air. You're talking to me? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. How Excellent. are you gentlemen doing this evening out there, there in... There's a lady I, I am definitely Hampshire. not a gentleman. There, Thank you very there much. There is a lady in the studio. Danica is with us. Uh, but yes, I think everyone's fine. I'm great. Uh, well, what I want to talk about tonight is Twitter, which is uh, not only one of the greatest tools ever created in the 21st century, but also one of the greatest games I've ever played in my life. Are you familiar with the concept of Twitter as a game? No. A question. no. But, but explain for our listeners uh, that don't have internet access <laughs> what Twitter is. Daryl doesn't uh, know what Twitter is. To all you Luddites out there, uh, it's a communications platform that allows you to send messages limited to 140 characters to anyone else uh, on the system. So say if I wanted to get into a argument about Israel with Roseanne Barr, which I've done, uh, which was fun. Uh, I can do that. I can tell uh, Randy Quaid that he's crazy. I can also uh, describe my personal pooping problems, you know, whatever. But now, hold on. Now, just to, b before you go on, with Twitter, you can tag somebody kind of in the post, right? You, you use the little at symbol and then the person's name. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to read it, right? Like if somebody like one of these Hollywood people uh, is getting a thousand people tweeting something at them every single day, I mean, unless they're totally obsessed with themselves, which I imagine many of them are. Most of them are. I imagine many of them are. But unless they're totally obsessed with themselves, probably aren't going to read all 1,000 of They these pay things. somebody to do that, Ian. That really? That is very, very likely. There's actually tools that are available. One of them is Follow Friday tool. So I'm friends with someone on Twitter who has like 5,000 followers. And I asked her, like, how do you deal with all this traffic? And it's because she uses this specific software that allows you to manage all that nonsense that comes to – like, I hate to mention him, but imagine Justin Bieber. He's got, you know, 13 million followers, something ridiculous. Whoever's managing his account – they have tools available to them to manage that much traffic. But what really, like, 
there's individual but why? people. Why? Why would you care enough to bother managing uh, all of that traffic as you know Justin Bieber because or even as Because they have his social media jobs now where you can get paid for doing that stuff. Right. I guess like, people have people. Hey, have you never watched television or yes, movies? No, I understand that. Where but, somebody says, I'll have my people call your people. Right. That's their people. Talk to my agents. They, they have a person. No, I understand that. that it's their job. <laughs> that doesn't answer my question, though. The The question was, why bother? I mean, there's a lot of things you can have an assistant help you with, right? Setting appointments or whatever. But why bother with what are likely going to be a bunch of inane ramblings, 140 characters of people on Twitter? Why even bother parsing through them? Is it because, you know, it supposedly looks good to interact with yes. the fans? Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. not VR. Justin Bieber. Yeah doing it right it's some other person so what's on really behalf happening? of okay when when but i it's tweet, not actually him hold on when i tweet at pace picante sauce yeah pace picante a jar of pace picante <laughs> sauce does not tweet back oh at me. yeah prove it how do you know that pace picante hasn't come up with artificial intelligence because there was actually a comedian that was tweeting at pace picante mm. with really horrible things and Pace had some kind of thing that would automatically retweet <laughs> anything that was tweeted at Pace Picante. Well, sometimes the people behind Twitter accounts can be very funny. There was a recent song that was put out by Taylor Swift, and there's a line in it that goes, star-crossed lovers. But a lot of people— No, it's, inc- I've got a lot of ex-lovers. Okay. They say that I'm insane. Get it insane. right, Danica. Come oh, on. Yeah, of course. It sounds like star-crossed lovers. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, no, no. And you need to the ask reason the Taylor why Swift people are getting here. mixed up is that they think it sounds like Starbucks lovers. So <laughs> <laughs> a few days ago, oh, she tweeted something about um, like happy, you know, a happy Starbucks day, even though that's not the correct lyric. And Starbucks tweets back saying it's not. <laughs> So it can be pre- it can be pretty humorous at times. Well, sure, I mean, and if you are actually reaching the person, so for instance, I know Penn Jillette, for instance, actually is Penn Jillette on Twitter. Yeah, sure. Uh, so if you're actually reaching the individual, and this is a way to connect with somebody that otherwise you'd have to go through gatekeepers, that's pretty useful. Yeah, so Twitter has a way to where they verify if one of these celebrities is the real deal. And there's that check mark. Stand by. uh, We'll come back with more and talk about this further. We'll bring Zach back from Ithaca for further comments on what this whole Twitter thing is, because I think he might have been going somewhere with this. It's Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. 
the successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. The AMP shirt giveaway is happening. You can become a Free Talk Live amplifier over amp.freetalklive.com. Sign up with any major credit card uh, through PayPal or use Visa or MasterCard right on our website. And the AMP is 5 bucks a month. That money goes towards helping Free Talk Live get on more radio stations, bring more internet listeners on board, and expand our satellite coverage of the globe. So you can help us for just 5 bucks a month over at amp.freetalklive.com and get perks. You get access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only uh, the podcast that doesn't have the usual commercials our regular podcast does. You, you also have uh, access to the AMP-only Facebook group and more. Go and get the details and get signed up for just 5 bucks a month over at AMP. Dot freetalklive.com but if you sign up for the platinum amplifier by the 1st of March so you got about 8 more days to do this uh, you sign up for platinum by March 1st and stay platinum through May 1st you will get the exclusive elite amp shirt uh, that is coming out uh, it is on a tech fabric it's a long sleeve shirt with a word cloud design that features some of the words from our show topics over a period of time it's pretty cool looking and uh, from what i understand it, it actually has been produced and some of them should be available uh, at the Liberty Forum, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, so if you want to hook up with this, or I guess it'll be available to look at at the Liberty Forum. You won't be able to actually get them yet because you have to, again, wait until May 1st. But uh, go to amp.freetalklive.com. You can get signed up there. Uh, then again, it is amp.freetalklive.com. So question. I don't yes. know if you can answer this or uh, the person that is running the, the SAM promotion, but I am an amplifier. Uh, I'm yeah. not platinum. I believe platinum is 15 and above or 20 and above? Uh, 25. 25? Okay. Yeah. So if I go up to platinum status, even though I'm an existing amplifier and I you know, obviously I'm still going to continue to amp, can I get that t-shirt? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if you're a current Ooh. amplifier and you want to uh, upgrade to platinum, you can certainly do that. You don't have to be a br- – so does not only apply to new amplifiers. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, please feel free to upgrade if you feel so inclined and you want to want to get one of these. If you want to see what the shirt looks like, you can go to shirt.freetalklive.com, and you'll see pictures there of it, both front and back. So, again, that's shirt.freetalklive.com. And to sign up for AMP, go to amp.freetalklive.com. As we go back to Zach, he's in Ithaca. You were calling Hello. about Twitter – and you're on via Skype at username lrn.fm. So you were calling to kind of talk about Twitter, and we just went off on the tangent about Twitter just in general and kind of <laughs> how it works and 
that you can reach people, for instance, sometimes without having to go through gatekeepers. Like, for instance, Penn Jillette, he I for years have been trying to get Penn Jillette on Free Talk Live. And, but reaching out to Pendulette is not an easy thing to do. He has a manager. But along comes Twitter, and now people are able to just write 140 characters and tag him in that, and he'll probably see it. So you were kind of introducing us to Twitter. Go ahead with uh, more of your thoughts. Can I give you a, an example of Twitter in action, like sure. in real life? Okay. Well, uh, I don't know if you know who Doug Stanhope is. He's an yeah. alcoholic atheist comedian whom I'm a big fan of. He's actually and kind of a libertarian comedian. From what I understand, yes, he's yes. actually he didn't a know. free state project He didn't project know he was a libertarian until somebody told him. But uh, on his podcast, he had a woman who was a former friend of, well, he was a friend of his when he was in L.A. years ago, and he went to Australia to do stand-up, and he did a podcast with her, and she essentially... Hello? Huh? Oh, no. I the, believe the sound card died no, again. I don't know if that was the sound card. No. He does have that. Uh, there's that little indicator on Skype where it says call quality information, and it's saying there's a slow oh, no. uh, connection. So it looks like there's a, perhaps an Internet issue. You know, sometimes it's it's our Internet, and it may very well actually be our Internet uh, at this point. So sorry about that, Zach. We'll see if we can get you back on here uh, in a moment. In fact, he may be back with us. Zach, I'm do we back. have you? Okay, great. Can I finish my story? Uh, yeah, please. Okay, so she outed this guy. This this is my ex-husband. He did this thing that was terrible, and she said his name on the podcast, uh, but she didn't get the spelling right. So I contacted her over Skype, uh, or Skype, not Skype, uh, Twitter, and I asked her the correct spelling of his name. Within 20 minutes, I had found his blog, his wife's Facebook, so on and so forth. And long story short... His entire online presence had to be scrubbed because she had told the world what he had done. And, and what had he uh, done? Because I think uh, we might have lost that detail. She walked in on him while he was raping a 10-year-old mentally oh challenged girl. What? Yes, exactly. So what happened was on Twitter, I sent her uh, Doug Stanhope his cell phone number. I sent... Uh, what is it? His his blog, picture of his family, so on and so forth. Okay. And in the end, he had to change his cell phone number. His wife's Facebook disappeared. Uh, his uh, LinkedIn, his blog, everything was gone. Now, now, quick point of clarification. Again, we missed a chunk of. I think we've kind of gotten what you were saying when the the internet cut out there for a moment. But uh, now she walked. This person who tweeted out, and this was her husband who was. Raping somebody? Yes, and she was on Doug Stanhope's podcast. She called him out, and she called out her husband in this case. Her ex-husband. Did she and have I, evidence of this, or was this? Oh, he was prosecuted. That's okay. the only reason it wasn't bleeped on Doug Stanhope's podcast was because it had been. It was. It, it, There's no way you could sue because it was true. Yeah. Okay. And Got it. Uh, so I found all this information about him, and I sent it to Doug Stanhope in the process. Uh, my Twitter got suspended permanently. I had to start wow. a new one. Wow! But it was a, it was a small price to pay at the altar of Doug Stanhope. <laughs> Long story short, short, um, this these messages got retweeted. They got spread all over the world, and people were calling him. Uh, he wasn't answering his cell phone, oddly enough. And uh, so, basically, from upstate New York to Australia, the other side of the world, I I helped ruin an evil person's life by simply bringing to light the truth of, of their their past. Wow. Okay. All and using Twitter. All using Twitter. And my account got suspended. But after that, all this information cascaded across the Internet, and people hounded this guy to the point where, you know, he's had to completely drop off the face of the earth as far as, it, as, far as the Internet goes. And it's a powerful, powerful tool. And at the same time, it's a game because uh, I've mentioned this previously on your show. Uh, Charlie Brooker's How Video Games Changed the World. It was 25 video games they profiled uh, uh, to the relevance of how they've affected society. And number one, it was kind of a bait and switch. It was Twitter. I was like, that's, that's kind of a cheat. It wasn't a game. Mm. But truly, Twitter is the gamification of real life. You compete to get the most followers. You compete to get the most retweets and favorites. And 
coming to understand that I fully understood Twitter. I, I, there's a lot of people who don't get it. They're like, oh, I, I don't understand. But if you understand it under those terms, it becomes more clear. Hmm. And I, there's another story I could relay. Well, there was an Egyptian uh, journalist who was— It seems like uh, we don't have time for a second story. But, uh, it, I mean, there's certainly lots of stories out there that have to do with Twitter. And there's no doubt it's a powerful communications platform with a fair amount of users— and I uh, appreciate your calling to share that story tonight, nice Zach. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I'm kind of in the camp of not really being too impressed by Twitter. I mean, it's got its use. Uh, we do have it here at Free Talk Live, and we you know, send stuff out via tw Twitter, but it's the same stuff we send out via Facebook and Google+. Plus. So it's not like I'd pick Twitter over the other platforms necessarily, but share your thoughts. Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. This is David Cordani, CEO of Cigna. For more than 20 years, Cigna has worked with the March of Dimes to address premature births in the U.S. Thank you for taking time to learn more about how you could support March for Babies in 2015. Premature births cause horrible suffering and cost billions of dollars each year. That's why Cigna is committed to raising funds and awareness through our employees, family, and friends to improve the health of moms and babies. Please join us in supporting the March for Babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. Hey! That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman, one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project, I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows, and if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free to take control of these airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. You can bring up anything that you'd like to discuss. Again, that toll-free number, 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, it's me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Don't forget to check out Daryl's website, fpp.cc. You go there and you can not only read Daryl's writings and subscribe to his uh, newspaper, that he puts out in real life, like an actual printed yes. newspaper. But, of course, you can get the PDF version as well at fpp.cc. You can also order books. Uh, what's one of the newest books that you've published? The newest book is How to Be a Hobo, mm-hmm. where it's essentially the hobo diaries of Brooke Willett, who spent about four years on the road. Formerly known as Brooke Kelly. Yes. Uh, also called the Truth Fairy. Right. Uh, Two of those years that she was out on the road, she had no documents at all. She was completely off the grid, Uh, no longer had social networks, Facebook, Twitter, email, cell phone, etc. Completely off the grid, huh? Completely off the grid. And it's basically her diaries. And there's also information in there about how to get off the street. So if you are a hobo. And you don't want to be. And you don't want to be, then there's information on how to get off. So, Daryl, question for you. I haven't read the book yet, but I just want to get just kind of a little bit of insight. Um, So did she willingly go off the grid then? Or did she just... Okay. So she didn't have a bunch of unfortunate circumstances. No. She decided she wanted to try it. Okay. And in the introduction, she says, I tried this out of curiosity. You should not do it unless it's out of necessity. Really? Okay. Yes. Of course. (laughs) It's not an easy life. Well, no, but sometimes people can find a lot of, not really glory about it, but just a lot of clarity and feeling better. It's one thing about giving up technology, but going completely on the streets, certainly some aspects of it are very hard, but getting rid of technology, I'm sure that was a huge weight off of her well, shoulders and some other people's shoulders. I can understand the appeal of disconnecting, right? Sure. I mean, that's why people go camping, for instance, because they want to disconnect from the world to some extent. And yes. It's just this is a more dedicated version of that for a longer period of time. Yeah, so in the hobo culture, and I didn't know this until I started editing the book, mm-hmm. there's something called gearless and fearless. What's that mean? It means that you give up Everything you own except for the clothes on your back, possibly an animal if you have an animal Mm -hmm. with you, and maybe like a can opener. Right. And that's it. And you live. And you live. Yeah. And she said that one of the hardest things about being gearless is staying that way because people will want to give give you you things. things. People see that you have nothing and they will give you things. She said that she was sitting outside of a restaurant waiting on you know somebody to come by and feed her. And some lady came by and said, what are you doing? She said, oh, I'm waiting on a sandwich. I know somebody's going to bring one sometime. She said, no, no, no. <laughs> what are you doing? And she was like, oh, well, you know, I'm a musician and this is how I live. Well, Wait, you're a musician, but you don't have an instrument. I'll be right back. Went home, got one of her husband's nine guitars that he had not played in many years, still had dust on the case, brought her a tent, and she said more stuff than she would have been able to carry. It took her four trips to take it across the street to the thrift store, and she gave it all away, (laughs) traded the guitar for a ukulele, Oh my goodness. And she eventually wound up giving the ukulele away. Sure, because you don't want to carry but it. But all around. she has is memories. This actually is interesting because when you first told me about this story, it sounded interesting. And now it's sounding a lot like a book I read uh, that is called Peace Pilgrim. And it's a fantastic story about this elderly lady who, I guess, well, she didn't start out that elderly, but over a period of decades. Most people don't start out elderly. In the story, though, over a period of decades, she uh, just walks. And Peace Pilgrim was a person, she got all this media coverage, because kind of like if you've seen Forrest Gump, you know how Forrest runs across the country. 
This lady actually did Everywhere that. Everywhere I went, I was running. Except she wasn't running. She was walking. And she walked across the country multiple times, um, basically trying to bring a message of peace out wherever it was that she went. She's did kind she of a- not even have a backpack full of anything? Like no tent or blanket or anything? Peace there there were part of the time that she did, but when she was gearless, she had nothing. Peace oh. Pilgrim, this is why it rings like Peace Pilgrim story. Peace Pilgrim, all she had at any time was a kind of this apron or smock of some sort that had a couple of pockets on it. And everything she ever had, the entire 30 years or whatever, she was out on the streets just walking places. All she had was what she could carry in those pockets, which usually was a toothbrush and some of her pamphlets about peace. And that's it. Everything else, she had no money. Uh, She gave up all of her worldly possessions, and she relied on the generosity of strangers, of total strangers, who some of whom had seen her story and, you know, knew that she was walking around, but most of them hadn't. Right. You know, uh, most of them just saw an old lady walking down the the side of the road, and they stopped to... So every... Every bit of shelter she received, every piece of food she received was given to her on the generosity of other human beings. And it came and it came and it came. And there were only a very, very few times in the the entire time that she was walking here and there. There were only a few nights where she actually had to, you know, sleep under a bridge or something like that, where she didn't, where she wasn't given wow. someone's couch to crash on or a guest room to sleep in, where she, you know, she, there was hardly any time where she actually went hungry for any amount of time. It was just an amazing story about, you know, the generosity of people uh, and how it was that she was able to survive without having a bunch of possessions. It was really interesting. Now, was she in a semi-warm climate, or did she have to experience winters? She, you're, you're asking Brooke, about Brooke. Brooke. Yeah. She traveled all over the country. Okay. Same with Peace Pilgrim. Uh, she jumped freight, and she actually writes about jumping freight. Trains. Yes. Mm-hmm. Freight trains. So I just thought that was an interesting kind of uh, comparison. Now, is this available as an audiobook only, or is it PDF, physical print? Uh, the audiobook is not yet out. Okay. Uh, that is still in production, but it is Kindle and physical e- or physical uh, paperback I available. I, hmm? Oh, I think I'm just going to have to go purchase it because I have a Kindle and it Kindles are great. They actually allow me to read more. Well, it inspires me to read more. FPP.cc. That's Daryl's website. Let's go to Matt. He's in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Matt. Good evening. Hey, you're on the air. I'm calling about my favorite food truck in New York City, the Cinnamon Snail. Uh, they're a vegan a vegan food truck. They started out doing cinnamon uh, donuts, and they do all sorts of delicious food. Um, and they're shutting down. <gasps> oh, no. No. And I'm really sad about that. And one of the main reasons that they're shutting down is the permit system in New York City. Oh boy, I can only There's- imagine the nightmarish labyrinthine bureaucracy that one has to uh, delve into in order to get the permission to actually sell hot food to somebody uh, or any kind of food in New York City. Do tell. Well, it's kind of ridiculous. It's ridiculous because the the city only delivers, only issues a certain number of permits. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those permits, instead of recy- you know, cycling through different vendors, and uh, and each you know each time one vendor say goes out of business, it expires, whatever, it goes to a new business. They will keep the they will renew the permit, keep it, and sell it on the black market for an extremely high price. So in the process of hold on, of- who's selling it on the black market? The bureaucrats themselves. No, no, no. The these businesses that okay. that decide that it's more profitable to sell permits than it is to actually be a functioning business. Wow. So that's preventing them from delivering vegan deliciousness to the city. Now wait, I'm I'm missing the detail on how people selling their permits on the black market is preventing the cinnamon snail from doing business. Maybe you could clear it up for me. I might have just missed a detail. Stand by. Matt, can you come back with us in a little bit? 
Sure. More with Matt here in New Jersey. His favorite food truck is shutting down. We'll talk about why. Coming up in moments, 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good health. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's togethersave.com. Togethersave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. Togethersave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at togethersave.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here and bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. Coming up, some not-so-great news out of Vermont, where there's been a crackdown on a Bitcoin vending machine operator. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. Over at FreedomsPhoenix.com. 
Newsnight.com. You're provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to Freedomsphoenix.com. Sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's Freedoms Phoenix. Dot com as we continue here with your calls. Matt is in New Jersey. He's frustrated with the food truck permitting situation there in uh, New York City, actually, where one of your favorite food trucks is going out of business. You say it's because of the permitting system. And I actually pulled up an article about this from GrubStreet.com entitled yep. One of New York City's Most Beloved Food Truck Owners Calls It or on excuse me, owners on why it's time to call it quits. Uh, and it's a business called the Cinnamon Snail, and they launched five years ago. Now, Matt, what you told us was that these food truck permits, they are not, the city is not issuing new ones. They put a cap on the number that there could be ever issued, I guess, uh, a little while back. And ever since that cap was placed on these things, the current owners of these permits, if they want to go out of business, will actually continue to renew the permit and then will sell they essentially lease the permit, which is apparently a hundred dollars a year for this permit, which is not a whole lot of money That's in a New a York lot, no. in New York City. Um, but the vendors who are shutting down their business, you know, like Joe's Food Truck, uh, they'll keep the permit and then essentially lease out the permit to another operator for what they say in this article a hundred times as much. So that's right. So that's your understanding of what's happening. Why does that have anything to do with the cinnamon snail? Are they unpermitted or something like that? Or what does that mean that's for correct. them? The cinnamon snail does not have a permit. And they've, oh, been, wow. they've been kicked out of streets. They've been told to move along and don't do business here because you don't have a permission slip that says, I, you know, I rule you and you, I can tell you what to do. Oh, that's so sad. Have they been arrested? I mean, because operating a food truck in a place like New York City, you'd expect the government goons are going to come threaten them and uh, possibly use men with guns. That hasn't happened? No, I think there's some flexibility with it. Um, I'm not sure of the exact details of how they've gotten along so far, but they are very popular. They've gotten international acclaim. So I guess so. I'm curious if so. What you're saying is the cinnamon snail food truck for five years in New York City has managed to operate without an actual permit, and the worst consequence that has come to them is that they've simply been kicked out of certain locations. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure of the exact details, but they've had it rough in New York City uh, in the past five years. So they've been kicked around so much, it's become it's been difficult for them. But but nonetheless, they're yeah. very very popular. So apparently, it hasn't. I mean, even though they've it, their location has been unsteady, obviously people have been able to find them. Is it kind of a situation where they update social media and say, "Hey, we're open exactly. at the corner of whatever. Uh, come see us." Is that how they're getting the word out? Yeah, they go to social media and their followers come come along like myself. They they go along and go buy their delicious treats. So he's shutting down because he's he's tired of dealing with the lifestyle of being having to jump around from location to location and getting harassed by these government goons. Uh, kicked out of different locations. He just doesn't want to deal with that anymore, and he can't do anything legally about it c because he can't afford to purchase the permit on the black market. That's what I understand. Wow. Yeah. wow. That's so sad. It's just another way that the government is doing us a disservice by existing. <laughs> I'm with you, man. Thanks, Matt, for your call tonight. I appreciate you telling that story. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The story over at GrubStreet.com, I will copy the link here, and we'll put it on our Facebook, Google+, Plus, and Twitter. You can uh, learn a little bit more about this. It's an actual interview with the owner uh, of this food truck, I can give you some more excerpts here if we get the chance. Outlaw Jersey Whale. Outlaw Jersey Whale. That's the name here. Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello? Outlaw Jersey Whale going once. Outlaw Jersey Whale going twice. We'll put that person back on hold. Maybe they're having some telephone cell signal difficulties. Uh, so the person here in this article over at GrubStreet.com, the individual who's being interviewed, the founder and chef behind the cinnamon snail, Adam Sobel, uh, really obviously loves what he's doing because he points out that 
he says it looks good from the outside, but it's hard work. He says I used to get upset about these kinds, all these kinds of problems, but they're inherent with running a food truck. Uh, he says it's kind of sad because this has been my baby, but I don't feel like we lost or anything. We kicked a lot of butt, and it was great. And now it's just time for something else. In light of the problems I was telling you about, I was beginning to feel like, on some level, there was just no light at the end of the tunnel. I've literally had every kind of crazy thing happen. No matter how good we get at doing this, and no matter how good our food is, and no matter how many backup plans we have for different emergencies, with a food truck, there's never an end in sight with those kinds of problems. And those problems make it really tough to actually make any kind of profit, especially the way we were doing it. He says offering organic food at pretty affordable prices that was very labor-intensive to cook. But still, at the end of the day, all those problems are not even why we're moving on. It's really this whole permit nonsense. And then he goes on to explain how these permits are sold on the black market for what he claims are up to 100 times what the actual permit holder paid for, which is about $100 per year. So he can't get a new permit, and he says, as bad as it is for us to deal with, we're by comparison to most street vendors in the city, very privileged. Almost all street vendors are not U.S. citizens, and they may not know their rights or have access to loans. Since before we even had a truck, we've been involved with the street vendor project that's trying to make some changes happen for the industry because it's really unfair. How many food trucks have you seen come and go in the last few years? There's very few that are even as old as we are, other than an odd halal cart or something. It takes an incredible amount of perseverance. You have to be a little bit crazy, or in our case, just really impassioned by an ethical goal. For us, this was never just making money. It was very much about providing vegan food to people who would never go into a vegan restaurant and help dispel a lot of people's misconceptions about how this food tastes. I think we've been really lucky and really successful with that mission. Whatever we're doing next is going to be guided by that same mission, and we're and we're to make this food attractive to people who don't already get it and affordable to people who don't already understand its value. And I have to say that having a vegan food truck is a cool idea. I'm not a vegan necessarily, but I've had some of their food, and some of it's pretty good. Yeah, the vegan food that I've had is always delicious. Well, and I love the idea that you could get it at a food truck. You know, classically, food trucks are not the most healthy places to go and eat. And well, I'm- I think there's kind of a revival with food trucks. And there's all these, there's this cooking show on TV. I think it's called like Food Truck Wars really? or something like that. <laughs> the, and the, and yeah, I, I know they're making a TV show out of everything these days. But they will, a lot of the, a lot of the food trucks are fairly profitable and they have everything from fish tacos to vegan food to Ethiopian food, just things that you would never see. And they can do so many different kinds of fusions with it, like Mm. mixing, say, you know, Korean barbecue in a taco, so to speak. So there's all these really cool ideas that are coming from these food trucks. And the nice thing about these food trucks is that they're mobile. They can go anywhere. They're not. And that's why the cities hate them. Uh, I know, because yeah. because when if, if a food truck comes into town, those bureaucrats they hate that somebody might be doing business and passing money around without them getting a cut of it. So they tend to crack down in a lot of different places on these guys. Um, another question from the author here at GrubStreet.com is: Do you think it's the end of days for food trucks? Have we reached a point where they're no longer sustainable? Uh, the answer from the owner is uh, of the cinnamon snail is, look, the permit thing is crazy no matter what, but it's nothing new. It's been crazy like that since the early 1980s, but it did get a little bit worse a few years back when the city made it so you can't vend from a metered location. We get a ticket for that every day, meaning that they pull the food truck up at a metered spot wherein they're paying the meter. But the city's still saying, sorry, that's against the rules, so here's your ticket. And so they're they're having to pay the city every single day for whatever violations they're receiving for simply setting in one place and selling food. So I wonder if that's still cheaper than them trying to buy one to of get these a permit. permits yeah, on the black market. It's, it clearly is. I mean, these guys are saying it's going to cost them 100 times as much to buy the permit than what it would cost if they could actually get one from the city. Uh, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE, but he does say it's not that it's not a sustainable business model, but for us, having done it ethically and making the food from scratch, 
He says it becomes as complex and complicated as possible. There's more coming up here. You can share your thoughts. The Bitcoin vending machine in trouble in Vermont. It's not good news. More on the way on Free Talk Live. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, February 20th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,207, down $2. Silver opened at $16.32, down $0.16. Cents. And Bitcoin is trading around $247. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? How about even three days without any help? Well, keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, the president of Sudan has made headlines after claiming that Islamic extremist groups ISIS and Boko Haram are a creation of the Central Intelligence Agency and Israel's Mossad. President Omar al-Bashir told Euronews both stand behind the organizations as, quote, there is no Muslim who would carry out such acts, end quote. Al-Bashir also warned against taking violent actions against the groups, stating it would only elicit more violence. The statements echo similar claims made by the leader of Lebanon's Hezbollah group and the mayor of the Turkish city Ankara, who also claimed the Mossad was involved in the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris. The U.S. Department of Justice will likely sue the Ferguson, Missouri Police Department if recommendations are not implemented. The news comes as Attorney General Eric Holder is expected to announce the conclusions of a DOJ investigation into the shooting of Michael Brown and the Ferguson Police Department. CNN reports the DOJ would be forced to sue the department if they do not agree to review and revise tactics. Ferguson Police Chief Thomas Jackson stated he has heard nothing new from the Justice Department. DARPA is developing a new search engine specifically focused on the so-called dark or deep web. Known as Memex, the project is being worked on by 17 different contractor teams with the goal of gathering content largely missed by the major search engines, as well as cataloging thousands of sites on the deep web. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by the Free State Project. Want to find liberty in your lifetime? 
then join thousands of others who are making the move to New Hampshire, the freest state in the union. To learn more or to pledge to move today, visit freestateproject.org. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 20th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. New documents from whistleblower Edward Snowden reveal the National Security Agency and the British hacked into a SIM card manufacturer in the Netherlands and now has access to encryption keys that allow monitoring of voice calls and metadata. The Intercept released the new documents, which show the agencies gained access to encryption keys that are built into the SIM cards and now monitor mobile communications without approval or knowledge of the company or foreign governments. The target of the hack was Jamalto, a SIM card manufacturer that produces SIM cards for 450 wireless companies, including AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon. The Electronic Frontier Foundation stated they believe the NSA and GCHQ violated international law. Following a recent court decision, thousands of people have signed up for a collaborative challenge to spying campaigns by the British government communications headquarters. Human rights group Privacy International has launched an initiative that allows anyone in the world to join their efforts to file a lawsuit against the Investigatory Powers Tribunal. The tribunal recently ruled the GCHQ had violated the law by sharing data with the National Security Agency. The lawsuit would seek specific details on what individuals have been targeted by the GCHQ. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by CoinArch, offering innovative online trading solutions for Bitcoin. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code MAX and get free brokerage for the first seven days. It only takes $10 to start an account. That's CoinArch.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at TheConsciousResistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 20th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. After logging onto the Xbox One game console at one of his classmates' homes, 12-year-old Michael Cutler admitted to reporters this week that he really does not have the slightest clue about what his friend's name could be. I mean, his name might be Brian. No, wait, Brian's my other friend, the one with the PS4. Yeah, if I'm being totally honest, there's no way I can tell you his name. Not a chance. Noting that the boy had, quote, an absolutely huge HDTV and a bunch of games his mom won't let him play, Cutler confirmed that he could recall only the faintest details about his friend, including the fact that his mother makes chocolate chip cookies and that he has a dog of some kind. He's got Killer Instinct, Assassin's Creed, Battlefield 4, and Titanfall? Man, that game's awesome. Anyway, I've just been calling him Flamethrower because that's his gamer tag. Hopefully he doesn't catch on. Hey, can I stick around for a few more hours? I'm so close to beating this. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free. Join us here on the radio waves and talk about anything that you would like to discuss. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in studio, it's me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Earlier in the show tonight, we were actually talking about how, uh, we actually with Akko from Cameroon, and talking about how to get people in Cameroon who don't have internet access to have access to Bitcoin. Apparently, Coinapult is making that possible via SMS message, which is very, very cool. But what prompted the conversation about Bitcoin initially was the fact that Akko was having a tough time going to MoneyGram and retrieving $50 that I had sent him on behalf of Dobby Barker, the guy who created ShinyBadges.com. And, uh, and so the government actually had stepped in and told Akko that he couldn't have this money, that it was being investigated. So and, sad. And that he was being investigated as somebody who is a known activist uh, in the area. They wanted to know why he's receiving this money from this mysterious you know, group outside of the country that's purportedly using the money to fund him to fund getting ideas of freedom out in Cameroon, which, of course, is, you know, to some extent, kind of what's happening. But, uh, you know... <laughs> He's using some of the money to install satellite systems in people's homes, and those satellite systems are used to receive LRN.FM. 
which brings the ideas of liberty into people's minds and into conversation and well, it's people a great are thing. looking up to him too and that, that that's just great too well yeah i mean he was he's the one who's been connecting people with these ideas mm-hmm. out there which is very cool one of i'm sure multiple people but so he was stopped from accessing the money that was waiting for him at moneygram and so of course the answer is Get away from the old money system. Get away from the centrally controlled old money system where governments can easily step in and step in the way and stop you from picking up the money or whatever and use Bitcoin instead. But unfortunately, even that's not perfect because at some point people will, until Bitcoin is prolific and people can easily transfer Bitcoin from one person to another for, let's say I want to, Danica, let's say you cook some dinner and I want to buy some dinner from you, I could pay you with Bitcoin and you would accept that and that would be fine. But if you didn't accept Bitcoin, then that would be an issue and I would have to then take my Bitcoin and convert that somehow into Mm -hmm. something else, some cash perhaps that you would have. Or uh, Dogecoin or silver, you know. Right. And also taking cash and converting that into Bitcoin. when It's the conversion points is where the government is able to step in, you know, to target something, to target a, a business or a person who's been doing this. We've seen stories in the United States with a website called Local Bitcoins, where government agents in Florida, I specifically remember a Florida story, where they would set up uh, essentially a sting operation and they'd, uh, you know, go and purchase Bitcoins from somebody, but tell them they were going to use it to buy drugs or something like that. And then they'd bust that person for facilitating. Right. And I think what was getting people in trouble in Florida was the fact that they were saying, and I'm going to do something illegal with this. Right. But there also have been people who've been Because threatened. if they would have said, you know, like, hey, I want to buy a pit bull and I'm going to use it for dog fighting, they would bust that person as well. Yeah. but Because this- it's the fact that there's the criminal intent- not just they're buying Bitcoin. But I've also heard they've gone after people for buying and selling Bitcoins and like not having a license from the government as well. So there's been different reasons why people have been threatened by these state governments. And it's one thing to go after people on local Bitcoin who are usually individuals who are offering the service of buying and or selling Bitcoin. Um, but you know those people are not necessarily in a static location. They'll meet you in a parking lot or something like that to sell you Bitcoin. Itinerant uh, vendor? You don't have a permit to be an itinerant vendor? Guilty. In this case, Vermont, the state regulators in Vermont are targeting the one Bitcoin, as they call them, ATMs. I prefer to call them a Bitcoin vending machine. Hold on. It might actually be one of the ATMs. It is ATM. not an ATM. It is a Bitcoin vending machine. It is a Skyhook brand uh, Bitcoin vending Not machine. Not an ATM. The very same uh, Skyhook that I happen to have a, one of these things. I purchased it for uh, the Shire Free Church. And as part of the Shire Free Church's mission, uh, we're getting Bitcoins out into the community. Uh, personally, I don't consider it to be a business, but that's another thing uh, entirely. Let me give you the story right. here from VPR, that's Vermont Public Radio, dot net. Vermont's first digital currency ATM has been ordered closed by state regulators who say the company operating the cash machine is violating state law. The move by the Department of Financial Regulation has disappointed the tech enthusiasts who use the new currency service. Bluebin, a Burlington-based 3D printing business, is a, is a visible part of the city's technology scene and geek community. The business made a splash in those circles last fall when it became home to the state's only Bitcoin ATM. In January, Governor Peter Shumlin lauded technology startups across the state in his budget address. He proudly said Burlington was named one of the top emerging tech hubs in the country last year and said the, quote, spirit of innovation is alive and well around our state, unquote. Shumlin didn't name Bluebin in the January 15th speech, but the small company is made up of young, tech-savvy entrepreneurs creating the type of jobs the governor's policies proposals are supposed to promote. Three days before that speech, the state's Department of Financial Regulation sent a letter to Bluebin and PYC, which is the owner of the Bitcoin ATM. Again, I prefer to call it a Bitcoin vending machine located at Bluebin. So you've got a 3D printing company, kind of a cool, hip thing because 3D printing is a new tech and they're a little too expensive for the average person to own a decent 3D printer right now. But if you have it in your mind that you want to create something from a 3D printer, you can take your creation into this 3D printing shop and they will print out your creation, which is a cool concept. Um, 
And so they've hooked up this Bitcoin vending machine there, and now the government's coming down and saying, you've got to get rid of this. The letter says, quote, among other penalties, operation of a Bitcoin ATM in Vermont without a license could result in a monetary penalty of $1,000 per day. Given your October 25th start date, you are already facing an administrative penalty of over $75,000. Wow. This that, is, that's insane. This is from the letter sent by the Department of Financial Regulation. The letter goes on. It's not the only potential punishment. Quote, additionally, knowingly engaging in a money services business without a license carries potential criminal penalties of a $10,000 fine plus up to three years in prison all because they have a little machine in the shop where people can come up scan a qr code from their phone feed money into the the machine and then bitcoin is then vended onto their phone that is why this company is facing seventy-five thousand dollars in fines, accruing what the thousand dollars per day that is why they're facing now up to three years in prison if they continue to operate the machine this is the threat from this Department of Financial Regulation. They don't care about the technology scene. They care about protecting the old businesses. They care about protecting the old guard, the old banks, the centralized businesses who've been around for decades upon decades, and they don't like the idea of these upstarts. PYC CEO Emilio Pagan Yorno admits the company doesn't have any Vermont specific licenses, but he does say the company is licensed federally through the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. He says, quote, According to FinCEN, I do need to have a money services business license, which I do for all 50 states and territories. And that's just telling FinCEN that I do provide a service with digital currency according to the new statutes, and Vermont doesn't have that. So apparently this guy has jumped through some status hoops and he figured that he, you know, jumping through the federal hoops would be enough to protect him here. Apparently not. Paganiorno said no state has regulations specific to digital currencies. Although federal law does govern currencies like Bitcoin, he says PYC operates seven Bitcoin ATMs across Vermont, New Hampshire, and New York. But only Vermont thus far has raised any regulatory concerns, which is interesting considering New York has kind of been known for the place where the regulators are bubbling and they've discussed up their plans. discussed having it regulated in New York. It hasn't gone forward with it, That's but correct. there's been some heavy discussion about it. So they, uh, they've left it alone in new york and now vermont cracking down on the one bitcoin vending machine in the state i happen to know i believe at least i'm pretty sure this pyc company is the company that's operating the bitcoin vending machine that is in manchester in new hampshire at a place called murphy's tap room which is a business owned by and operated by free state project participant uh, so you know I'm, I'm hoping that this is not a, a sign of things to come in other places that hopefully this will only happen in vermont and will not spread from here but these bureaucracies tend to be emboldened by what the other ones do. When one state passes a smoking ban, all of a sudden 10 more states get a smoking ban the next year. So there's more to the story. We'll come back with it. 855 450 free. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. The vet had them on antibiotics as well as steroids. Nothing worked. The vet had given him a cortisone. The vet prescribed an antihistamine. The vet thought that Molly was just old. Probably three to four hundred dollars every four months. At least five thousand dollars in vet bills. All total, twenty-seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite. D i n o v i t e dot com. Eight five nine four two eight one thousand. The omega three fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive of enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The ingredients are what the veterinarian said he was lacking. Within two days, his scratching, it seemed to go away. After five weeks, her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. Molly's gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Oh, yes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. 
According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mints, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2233. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial on in toll free here at 855-450 free. Has the Bitcoin vending machine crackdown begun or will this just be a one off and it won't happen again? Seems like the former is probably more likely than the latter. I mean, I don't like to be negative or pessimistic, but this is really a sad story where a, co a company in uh, Burlington, Vermont, a 3D printing company, partnered up with another group called PYC. They operate Bitcoin vending machines. Uh, the article in uh, Vermont Public Radio refers to them as ATMs, but that's not a really accurate term because the ATM, the kind of classic definition of an ATM, is a machine that spits money out uh, from an account that you own. The Bitcoin vending machine allows you to send Bitcoin to your wallet, your Bitcoin wallet, by putting cash into the machine. So in the same way that if you go to a candy vending machine that it vends candy to you for cash, this machine vends Bitcoin to you for cash, a digital form of uh, what some would say currency, others would say property. There's different definitions out there of what Bitcoin is. And I would say it's both of those things, depending on if you're asking me if I know the IRS definition or the FinCEN definition. And it's something totally different if you ask for the FEC definition. Well, right. The IRS said it was property, right? And then yes. FinCEN, the Financial Crimes Enforcement FinCEN Network. FinCEN said that it was money before the IRS said it was property. The FEC, which is the Federal Elections Commission, says that it's to be treated on the one hand as an in-kind contribution, but then carried over and placed in the amount of cash on hand. Oh, it is so amusing how they can't agree on it. Yeah. 
it, it's interesting, and they're going to keep having these conflicting rulings because it's convenient for them to do so. Sure. Yeah, whatever it is that's most convenient, as far as the definition, will be the one they choose when they're trying to prosecute you. <laughs> right. And, well, the IRS wants it to be property for taxing purposes mm -hmm. because then you get charged a capital gain or a capital loss on property. Which, of course, requires you to inform the IRS of this particular property, which I wouldn't recommend and anyone about do. At least half of Americans do that. So sad. I mean, if you're going to have Bitcoin, which you can have without any governmental awareness of the Bitcoin at all, then why would you want to put that on their radar? Ian, I guarantee you that Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock, mm -hmm. is listing the capital losses yeah, from all is. of the over or That's from all of the Bitcoin purchases that they made. Too bad for well, him. Actually, it's kind of good because the price of Bitcoin went down last year, so mm. he has capital loss not capital gain, so then that offsets from the profits a little bit. Hmm. But yeah, I, I do agree that it's too bad that you know there's paperwork that the government wants you to file at the end of the year where you tell them how much money you've made. Or if you have one of these W-2 jobs where your employer tells the IRS, this is how much money we gave. We'll come back with more from the story about PYC and their uh, being attacked, threatened with violence threatened with prison because they are selling a product a service or whatever you want to call it they're selling bitcoin through this vending machine uh we'll come back with it here dave is in new york you're on or not new york excuse me dave in new hampshire uh you're on free talk live hello dave dave in new hampshire yes i'm here yes uh the uh thing i wanted to update you on is that this this you know uh, apparently uh, what's becoming an epidemic of uh, school government school empire builders calling police on activists. And the, the, the other one I wanted to tell you about is one that's going on in uh, Timberlane Regional School District, a situation that's going on. It's pretty similar to the one I told you about uh, in, in Wyndham the other day. This is New um, Hampshire? So, what, so yeah, in, Dave, sorry, for yeah. the people that weren't listening a couple days ago, can you give a very brief recap about what happened in Wyndham? Yeah, a person at Wyndham uh, was, you know, at a meeting and, uh, you know, asked some questions, and so they called police on him. Uh, they what were kind of meeting? What, school board? It, may, it was a school board, and it may have been illegal what they were doing at the meeting, and that's why he spoke up. Uh, so he was, uh, he had, they called police, and the police came, um, which makes it easy to get, con you know, confused with the Timberlane fascism, <laughs> you know, uh, you know. So, so um, the, what's going on at Timberlane is, is there, uh, there are some differences. What's been happening initially was, I guess, one of the school board members was banned from going to the school administrative offices, right? The place, I guess, where they have the meetings. Okay. Um, and, or at least the offices. I don't know about the meetings. But uh, this happened uh, late last year uh, or in, in the middle of last year. And then after that, there was an incident where a citizen was asking some questions. He was a former cop, uh, and I think he's a member of the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. And he had some questions, uh, you know, during this meeting. And so while he was outside in his car, I guess he was taking a nap or something um, or, or just warming up. I don't know what he was doing out there, but not everybody who goes to a meeting stays for the whole meeting. But he was out there, and— um, the police pulled up on him. They called him. They called police on him. And, and then they, they came up with this regimen where now they're going to have police in the parking lot all the time, or at least uh, a regular police presence in the parking lot at the school district. Hmm. Um, and uh, uh, then, then the most recent thing and so was this happened, an intimidation tactic? Did the police come and harass him for being in the parking lot? It struck me as being that way from, from listening to him talk about mm -hmm. it on the radio. He was uh, he had a concealed carry license and the thing fell out of his wallet when he was showing them his wallet. So they freaked out a little bit about the firearm. Now, that's one of the things that's interesting, though, is that he was on school, I guess, the school property and they didn't do anything to him. They didn't charge him with anything, hmm. uh, which, you know, in a lot of states, it would be. The yeah, end that's of the probably world, a felony uh, in, in most places. You would think so, uh, you know, considering the, the restrictions we live under. But yeah. Uh, he was, he was, you know, not treated as badly as he could have been by the police. Uh, but 
But the latest development was that the um, the deliberative session occurred, and, the, and these activists basically got crushed. Um, you know, the folks who were asking questions, pushing back, trying to keep the government in check, didn't do very well at all uh, as the actual decisions were being made um, over, the, over the last week or two. And this is in a place um, where, where was it called? Timberland. It's called the Timberlane Regional Regional Timberlane. School District. The, head, the headquarters is in Plastow. Well, I can't name all of the. The fact is, I mean, that's what happened in Grafton. They, uh, they, they were, they weren't ultimately successful at stopping the, you know, the increased spending, from what I understand there. But they did get some of their, uh, their ballot measures on the ballot unmodified, from what I understand in Grafton. So they had some level of success out there, which is a different small town. In I, I'm not sure you could necessarily call it success. Okay. And here's why. Because even though there uh, weren't articles, which is what the ballot measures are called in New Hampshire, even though those were placed on unmolested by the deliberative session, Mm -hmm. the people were told beforehand that the petition warrant articles were to be considered advisory, which means that, you know, these aren't binding, they're just suggestions. Which is why nobody tried to modify them. I see. In Keene, where some activists put warrant articles on by petition for the school district, they were not told, you know, the meeting was not told beforehand these are advisory, and they were molested to explicitly be made advisory. Either way, the point is it's hard out there for all the people who are looking for smaller governments. That's why we need more people to move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Thanks, Dave. That's Dave from RidleyReport.com. More coming up here. Go check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good health. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's togethersave.com. Togethersave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. Togethersave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at togethersave.com. Are you a sneezer? If you're not, can you get close to one? I don't literally mean someone sneezing. Sneezer, as defined by marketing guru Seth Godin, is an opinion leader. When a sneezer mentions something, other people catch what Godin calls the idea virus. Seth Godin says some people are more likely to tell their friends about a great new idea. So identifying and courting sneezers is a key success factor for idea merchants. His book, Unleashing the Idea Virus, is the most downloaded ebook in history, and you can download the whole book free. That's how he's making his idea contagious. Click tips, tricks, and other stuff to help you cut through the clutter at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like a comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com.
Free Talk Live. Did you say that you prostituted yourself when you were 10 years old? I was doing something of a sexual nature in return was that for... A woman or a... It was a next door neighbor. He was probably around 16. So he took advantage of you. He... No, sir. He didn't take he advantage of me. You. He corrupted you morally. No, no, sir. It was my choice to climb into his According window. It was Lord. my choice, Listen. Lou. It was my choice to take my pants off and get into his Listen. bed. It was Listen all my Listen choice, Lou. Listen to me, Ian. You do not have the right at the age of 10 to make that decision. Don't you dare tell me what I can and can't do, do, Lou. I'm telling you, he molested you. No, Lou. You don't even Sorry, realize Lou, you, you don't understand what molestation is. Molestation is unwanted sexual advances. I consented. I know you don't believe that's possible. I know me better than you know me, Lou. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free to bring up anything you'd like here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The government, guys, they want to give, uh, they want to make sure you've got a permit before you do anything. After all, they want to make sure that they're getting the money uh, from whatever it is that you're trying to do. In this case, we're talking about a, a Bitcoin vending machine operator that is being threatened with prison not only the operator, but the store in which the vending machine is located. It's Burlington, Vermont. The one Bitcoin vending machine that Vermont Public Radio is referring to as an ATM, although I think that's a misnomer. Uh, the, the Bitcoin vending machine, the one in Vermont, has been now threatened. The store that it's in is a uh, 3D printing business where you could take your 3D printing d- printable designs and have them actually printed without having to buy your own 3D printer, which you know economically just doesn't make sense for most people, but it makes sense to go to the store and do it. And then they've got this cool little Bitcoin vending machine there where you can put cash in and it puts Bitcoin on your cell phone uh, or puts it in your wallet. It's your easy way to buy Bitcoin. It's so easy. And it's no different than me standing there and selling you my Bitcoin. The Bitcoin is just essentially an intermediary in that process. So Instead much. of having a human being sell you the Bitcoin, the human being allows the machine to do the work for the human being. But yet uh, they're saying that the company, both of these companies apparently, or at least one of the companies, needs to have some sort of government permission slip. And PYC, the company that owns the Bitcoin vending machine, is saying, well, we have the permission slip from the federal government. They've gone through this FinCEN group, the Uh, financial crimes enforcement network or whatever they call themselves and they've got their little permit for being a money transmitter in the 50 states but they don't have one for vermont didn't think they had any need of one vermont in vermont because vermont has no regulations that have anything to do with bitcoin at least that's according to the story here at Vermont Public Radio, which I'll continue here now. They talk a little bit about what the Bitcoin vending machine does. You present your QR code, and uh, that gets scanned by the vending machine, which then uh, the vending machine accepts U.S. cash into the machine. It's then converted to Bitcoin and deposited in the user's digital Bitcoin wallet. But Riley, that's the owner of the business, and Pagan Yorno, that's the owner of the machine, say the regulators don't understand the process uh, when they started threatening the entrepreneurs with major penalties in jail time. We're talking three years in prison and thousands upon thousands of dollars in fines. Pagan Yorno says they didn't really do their research, and they're trying to target smaller digital currency businesses rather than ones that have already been operating for three years now in Vermont. Dale Shaft, a spokesman for the Department of Financial Regulation, said the department, quote, can't comment on any pending issues. Well, wait a minute. Why can't you comment on the general issue of Bitcoin regulation? You could comment on that. If the idea is you can't comment on this case, okay, fine. This case is open right now, so you can't comment on it. But what about the regulations of Bitcoin? What about if somebody else wanted to be a Bitcoin vending machine business in Vermont? What process would they need to go through to avoid getting this threatening letter? We can't comment. Right. They can't. No. They don't know what the hell they're talking about, so it's better for them to keep their mouths shut. Right. The letters from the department, which span over a three-month period, warn Bluebin and PYC they may be in violation of the law, but they also seem to show a lack of clarity about what exactly the two companies are even doing. Quote, 
from the first letter that was sent, the first threatening letter, quote, if we understand your business model correctly, PYC needs a money transmission license and Bluebin needs to be appointed as an authorized delegate of PYC, unquote. Bluebin CEO Dan Riley said he and a PYC representative had a conference call with state regulators in which the officials tried to get a better grasp on how the system worked. Quote, this is from, uh, uh, let's see, Riley. Riley says, tell us what you're doing, kind of give us a sense of what's going on, said Riley, describing the regulators' approach to the conversation. Quote, if you need more licensing, we'll figure that out, but we really want to know what Bitcoin is and how it might fall under what we're doing. Well, look. I don't want you to know anything about Bitcoin. I don't know if talking to these regulators is a good thing at all as far as they're conducting an investigation on this business and they're trying to decide whether or not what they're doing is illegal. They're sending letters saying, we believe what you're doing is illegal and you need to stop. And then they're offering to have these conversations to further clarify. I think they want to know for sure if it's illegal so they can feel more comfortable actually bringing criminal charges against these folks. Because right now, apparently, they're claiming they, they are not planning on getting rid of the, uh, the vending machine. Pagan Yurno described the call similarly. He says they just basically went over what is Bitcoin, and they didn't really understand it. They don't really understand what I'm doing, to be honest. That license and delegation, according to state law, costs upwards of $1,500, a cost Riley says would make the operation prohibitively expensive. And I, I totally agree. I mean, look... I don't know if there's more Bitcoinery going on in Vermont, but I, I doubt it. Uh, New Hampshire recently was shown by Overstock.com as being the number one per capita, number one source of Bitcoin business for Overstock.com. Of all the 50 states, New Hampshire by and far was the most popular for Bitcoin use. So I don't know where, where Vermont was on that particular list. I don't know. Uh during one of the testimonies up at the state house earlier in the week, somebody had a chart that I don't know where they got it from that showed the number of Bitcoin users per capita. That's what this is. Was overstock.com. Okay. Yeah. And New Hampshire was number one. By far. Utah was number two yes. with about half of whatever New Hampshire yeah, I think had. New Hampshire Utah, was like 40% really? higher. Than Interesting. Utah. And then, like, they didn't even mention who was number three, but on the chart, it was a lot lower than Utah. Yeah. So Vermont wasn't even on that list at all. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I, well, they, it was all 50 states, I so think, Vermont yeah. was on there somewhere. They just weren't one, two, or three. But I, my, just, I never would have thought that Vermont would have been even you know, know very much about Bitcoin. Well, I don't so. know. I mean, Vermont's just a place where people sure, live. Yeah. I don't know why you would think that people in Vermont would be less They're aware. They're somewhere of in the top Bitcoin. 50 of U.S. states. Well, yeah. obviously, I'm just saying it does not. It would not strike me as though that they were particularly Bitcoin savvy. You know what I mean? I would just why? say why because they're a bunch of uh, hippie rednecks. I did not say that. What What are you talking about? Would, rednecks? They're just hippies. I would think that a place like New York, where there's a lot more people in certain areas, that there would be more usage of bitcoin i mean there was well, it's per a per capita right per ca so yeah so yes. obviously I, they, there's going to be less use of bitcoin in total in a place like vermont or new hampshire well, compared more, to new york morgan Spurlock recently aired this documentary on cnn last night and i haven't gotten the chance to watch it what's it called uh, surviving on bitcoin okay. or? Uh, the the name it's a series that he it's does series, on yeah. cnn called inside man inside man thank you yeah. and the episode last night was uh episode five of season three so he had, he had to survive on Bitcoin for a week, and he's in New York, and New York obviously has he's a in higher- He's in New York City. New York City, okay. Higher population. It just seems to me, this is just my thinking, that New York, New York City would probably have a bigger Bitcoin following than Vermont would. That's all. Per capita. Sure. It would be interesting to pull up the uh, the list from Overstock.com Right, because see. New York City is- just going to like sway the statistic for all of New York State. That's true. That's because true. most of New York State is, you know, very rural. But when he says it's prohibitively expensive, like to get this license, according to state law, fifteen hundred dollars, uh, that is prohibitively expensive because there's not a whole big demand for Bitcoin. You put one of these machines in more as an outreach tool than than anything else, in right. my experience at least, which is was my intention with getting the machine. And that's why, you know, it's it's part of the Shire Free Church's uh, project here. So it's not a business. It's not a money-making business. In fact, 
uh, there's, it's really kind of hard to really track if there's any money generated from it at all because the price of Bitcoin is constantly changing. And so essentially, in order to, and the way the Skyhook works by default is that the regular software on there only allows you to sell Bitcoin you already have. So your buyers are not connecting to anyone else selling Bitcoin. The, the machine isn't connecting to a network of Bitcoin sellers. It's right. just so selling it's what's in the wallet. It's not a money transmitter. Money transmitter is when a third party gets involved. Where Correct. if I said, hey, Ian, I want to buy something from you, and you said, all right, well, we've got to run this through Danica. Danica would then be the money transmitter. You hand her the money, she hands me the money. With the machine, basically, I'm putting money in an envelope, setting it on the desk, and you're taking the envelope. Exactly. The machine is essentially holding the envelope in that analogy. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There's a little more about this story out of Vermont. Not good news. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. They say life is about choices. So let me introduce you to one of the best choices you can make in life, Granger Choice. The Granger Choice product line has just about everything we need to keep this place running, from batteries to V-belts, safety to sump pumps. And with Granger Choice, we can trust that every product is dependable and cost-effective. When it comes to making life choices, here's a great one. Granger Choice. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash choice or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no. now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Are you happy to see the Bitcoin crackdown happening in Vermont? Well, I guess crackdown, I mean, it's, it's not an inaccurate thing to say, I suppose, in that there's only one Bitcoin vending machine, and they are cracking down on it. Uh, they've sent threatening letters to the operator of the vending machine. PYC is the name of that company. They have seven machines in New York, uh, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. And uh, now if they follow the state's instructions, they will not have any Bitcoin vending machines in Vermont. But so far, they have refused to comply, which I think is a really interesting aspect of the story here. We'll continue. There's a little bit more from VPR, which is Vermont Public Radio, reporting on a company, two, two companies actually. There's one called Bluebin, B-L-U-B-I-N. And Bluebin is a company that allows you to print things 3D. So three, they've got 3D printers. You can bring your designs in or email them to them, I presume. And they'll print out whatever tchotchke or thing that you've created, which is cool. It's a cool service. And because they're kind of a hip tech store they added a bitcoin vending machine in partnership with this pyc company only to receive threatening letters from the state department of financial regulation saying they might owe seventy five thousand dollars and one thousand dollars per day if they continue to operate the bitcoin vending machine up to three years in prison as well. I, I think it's interesting that the word might you might owe us we don't really know yet well, they haven't charged them. That's the thing. They haven't come after them criminally uh, yet with any kind of forfeiture notice. Um, they're just they're looking into it. They're they're trying to threaten them out of doing it. Right? This we're, is we're conducting an investigation. Well, but they're doing more than that, right? They're they're definitely conducting an investigation, but they're also threatening. And and this is a common bureaucratic tactic where bureauc uh, bureaucracy is a threatening group of men and women who will you know kind of use violence against you if they darn well feel like it. And most of the time, they'll get away with it unless you've got all kinds of money to spend on attorneys to try to defend yourself in their court system. Uh, you're probably going to get steamrolled over top of. Yes. And so people know this about the government. People know the kind of the cliche that, oh, you can't fight City Hall. Well, you certainly don't think you can fight the Department of Financial Regulation or the state police or whoever else it would be that might come after you. So the average person, when receiving a threatening letter from the government, they're just going to do what they're told. Yes. Because nobody really wants to go to court. Nobody wants to lose their Bitcoin vending machine. They don't want to lose their business in total. So, you know, that's why they're coming down on both the operator of the machine and the business that is housing it. Because if they can get Blue Bin to get really nervous and say, well, well, well we don't want, well, we didn't think we were going to get in hot water over running this cool little vending machine. We just thought this was like a cool tech thing and we wanted to offer it to our customers. But if it's going to put the rest of our business in jeopardy, then we don't want it here. So that's, they're, they're kind of using the owner of the business. They're trying to clamp down on him in order to stop the vending machine, even if the vending machine company is willing to go forward and you know, say, hey, look, we'll take the risk. This is our machine. You guys aren't profiting from it. Uh, you know, We're the ones that at total risk here to try to calm down this, the store owner. Uh, that's That may not be enough to persuade this person. you know. Right, because remember here in Keene, when you were looking into getting the Skyhook, that's right. I asked one of the store owners that was taking Bitcoin if she would be willing to put a machine in and somehow she wound up talking to like an accountant or lawyer and said, well, you might want to look into all of these regulations. She started looking in. Oh, uh, it's scary. Yeah, it was scary. Yeah, she, it sounded like that she just didn't want to touch it at all. And I don't blame her. I don't and then I her. started looking into the regulations to see what it would take to become a financial services, whatever it is. What was it, like a, a million-dollar bond or something crazy like I that? I didn't even get that far. Yeah. I got to where it said you need a routing number, uh, or what's essentially called a routing number, that means that you have to be a bank. 
in order to apply. I don't even know how to begin to get that, but I don't want to be a bank. I'm not trying to be a bank. Wasn't even looking into possibly ever being a bank. So I stopped at that point. The license and delegation, according to state law, costs upwards of $1,500. A cost that Riley, who's the owner of the uh, blue bin, I think, says would make the operation prohibitively expensive. He says, quote, obviously we want to comply with any regulatory framework that needs to be complied with. We're not trying to run anything under the table, so to speak. But what we're trying to act, what we're trying to actually make sure is that this is properly taken care of, because our understanding has been the state doesn't really understand where this falls. So they're just trying to shove us into a box that we might not fit into. Pagan Yorno of PYC says the state shouldn't be targeting Blue Bin to start with. It's the company's only a contractor. Blue Bin gets a small cut of PYC's profits from the machine in exchange for hosting it. The ATM, a white metal pedestal on the floor with a touchscreen and slot for money to go in, sits unplugged next, next to Blue Bin's kiosk in the Church Street Mall. Riley says he has no plans to do away with it, and PYC isn't planning on submitting a license application anytime soon. The owner of PYC, Pagan Yorno, says, quote, In actuality, I'm not entertaining that at all. I don't need a license. So I'm reaching out for something I don't, oh, excuse me, so them reaching out for something I don't need, it doesn't matter. They can't find me on something I don't need. Unquote. Now, I'm sorry, Mr. Pagan Yurno, but they sure as hell can find you on anything they damn well please. Whether or not it will hold up in court is another question. Right. Uh, I, I was going to say they can attempt to fine him, but they can't collect unless it holds up in court. Well, if they send him an administrative fine demand and he cuts him a check, then they can collect it. But if he says, the hell with that, we're going to court, then it gets a little bit more complicated. Right. And again, they just like to throw their weight around. They, let's send a threatening letter. And it says here, even though the owner is saying he's not entertaining shutting, uh, s submitting a license application, the machine is sitting unplugged. So why is the machine unplugged if they're not, you know, so if, on one hand, it sounds like they're, they've been dissuaded, but on the other hand, it sounds like they're moving forward. So I'm not really clear on what's he, going he to happen. He probably just wants to make sure that he doesn't accrue any more thousand dollar per day fines hmm. probably and they're probably just to make sure that he you know can go to court and the judge isn't you know looking oh well you know you just you're you're facing a hundred thousand dollars worth of fines here just you know give them sure. 50 and everything will go away so who knows how this is going to end up shaking out i think it's a really sad story about these uh existing money systems these old money systems doing everything they can including being willing to use violence against these uh, people just because they want to do something different they want to get a bitcoin out into people's hands and look paying a, a licensing fee of fifteen hundred dollars you're not making a bunch of money selling the bitcoin they have to take bitcoin they already own and sell that bitcoin from the machine which means that if it if bitcoin drops below a certain price you can set in the machine to say all right well let's say you bought the bitcoin when it was at uh, 300 dollars, and now it's okay. at 250 and you don't want to lose money on selling that bitcoin you can tell the machine if the price drops below x so if the price drops below 300 the price you paid for it then don't sell the Bitcoin. Basically, if someone comes up to the machine, it'll say, we're sorry, Bitcoin's not available at this time, um, which is kind of crappy. You don't want to do that to people. Right. You want to be able to sell Bitcoin. And so uh, that's really unfortunate because you know they're, they're selling their own product. They're not connecting with someone else. But even if they were, even if they were able to connect with one of these Bitcoin uh, networks, these exchanges, if you will, like Coinbase, uh, even if they were selling through a third party, even if the machine was being used to sell other people's Bitcoin, so what? Who really cares? And why is it any of the state's business anyway? Well, here's how I look at it. If And I look at it this way, basically, after hearing testimony from a legislative committee hearing where they were talking about you know not regulating Bitcoin people as... Money transmitters, and somebody said, well, anytime any two things of value exchange through a third party, then the third party is a money transmitter. Well, based on that rationale and that logic, every time you go to the grocery store, then the grocer is the third party between you and the wholesaler. So every grocery store, every mom and pop mm -hmm. store, everybody that sells anything is a money transmitter. 
But they're, of course, not going to apply it that way, even though they'll testify to a committee that that's what it means. And if I give you ducks for chickens through Danica and she's a money transmitter, you know, like they'll go after her, but they're not going to go after, you know, the grocers. So it's ludicrous. They have goofed up rationale, goofed up logic, and they're going to apply it how they want to apply it. So there you go. That's the latest uh, from the Bitcoin universe. Of course, you know, we'll continue to follow interesting Bitcoin related stories as they come up here. If you want to learn more about Bitcoin, maybe you're new to the concept. I would recommend you go to weusecoins.com. It's a great little intro site. There's a short little two minute long introductory uh, YouTube video that you can watch there and then dig in further and learn as much as you like about it. I think it's fascinating. And the more that we can get out there, the better. So go and check it out when you get the chance. And if you've got some Bitcoin, you want to donate it to Free Talk Live via our tip jar. Just drop by bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Don't forget to drop by Daryl's website, fpp.cc, where you can actually order books in real life with Bitcoin as well. So we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five. $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of The Corey Moore Show is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keenan in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, February 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,213 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $244. Antiwar.com reports Pakistani and Afghan officials say they have been assured by the Taliban that they are ready to engage in peace talks with the Afghan government with an eye on ending over 13 years of war. Officials say the talks could start as soon as next month, but details have yet to be worked out. Both the U.S. and Taliban have denied that any current talks are ongoing. Pakistan has been leading the push for this new round of peace talks and has been using its military intelligence community's considerable influence to coax Taliban leadership to the negotiation table. Whether the talks are going to amount to anything is another matter, as previous efforts to get the negotiations going stalled pretty quickly over minor procedural matters. The new Afghan government is trying to present itself as much more willing to make a deal than its predecessors, however, and that is reason to be optimistic. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a U.S. judge on Thursday rejected BP's attempt to reduce the maximum civil fine it could face for its role in the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill, leaving it potentially liable to pay $13.7 billion under the Federal Clean Water Act. U.S. District Judge Carl Barbier in New Orleans agreed with the federal government that the maximum civil penalty that BP could face is $4,300 per barrel spilled. BP had sought a $3,000 per barrel maximum, equal to a maximum $9.57 billion civil fine. Barbier has not decided how much BP should pay, and it is unclear when he will decide. Setting a fine is the last step in a civil trial overseen by Barbier to determine responsibility and penalties for the April 20th, 2010 blowout of the Mocondo oil well, which killed 11 workers and caused the largest U.S. offshore oil spill. BP spokesman Jeff Morrell said the company disagrees with the decision and is considering its legal options. Barbier previously ruled that BP had acted with gross negligence or willful misconduct and that 3.19 million barrels of oil were spilled. These factors are being used to set the maximum civil fine. BP has incurred more than $42 billion of cost for the spill, including cleanup, fines, and compensation to victims. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. UPI reports a recent U.S. Army War College study states dishonesty and deception among Army personnel is common. In the study called Lying to Ourselves, Dishonesty in the Army Profession, the War College's Strategic Study Institute interviewed Army personnel from all ranks and found that lies permeate throughout the military institution, whether by civilians or those in uniform. Officers sometimes face a suffocating amount of tasks. Often, they use phrases to make it seem as if they've complied to all requirements demanded. The study said personnel do this to sugarcoat the hard reality that in the routine performance of their duties as leaders and commanders, U.S. Army officers often resort to evasion and deception. The most highlighted rationalization to partake in dishonesty is that it is often necessary to lie because the task asked of personnel or the reporting required of them is unreasonable, irritating, or, quote, dumb. One officer said, we don't trust our compliance data. Part of the the reason why lying is so prevalent is because there is a psychological disconnect between performing a dishonest act and facing the consequences for it. Former Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel sent a memo to the most senior leaders of the U.S. military 